Janelle presents University of Hawaii Rainbow Football. As Bob Wagner prepared for his second season as the Rainbow head coach, he was faced with more questions than answers. Now the Rainbow team personality has been forged. A tough young defense led by sophomore linebacker Mark Odom. An offense highlighted by All-America candidate Hey Cody Fakaba. And the nagging quarterback question answered by the selection of Warren Jones as the starter. But the Rainbows could be in trouble. Tonight, Hayden Fry and the Iowa Hawkeyes invade Aloha Stadium, led by all Big Ten quarterback Chuck Hartley, who last year ranked third in the nation in passing efficiency. The last time the Hawkeyes came to Honolulu, their tough 17-6 victory was the closing chapter on the 1984 Rainbow football campaign. Tonight, both teams are looking to write some history in chapter one of a brand new season. Rainbow football is sponsored by Coors, the original draft beer in bottles and cans. Coors, the original. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Leahy, along with Rick Blangiardi. Welcome to the opener of the 1988 football season between the University of Iowa and the University of Hawaii. You know, Rick, a lot of people talk about parity in college football, but Iowa has already been picked as the number one team in the nation by Sport Magazine. Sports Illustrated has chosen them as ninth in the nation. And when the Sports Illustrated described Hawaii, it was one sentence. Hawaii will have trouble scoring, but their opponents won't. If there's parity in college football, this is a very tough opener for the Rainbow. Yes, it is, Jim. It's a tough opener for two different reasons. One, because of Iowa and the strength that they bring to tonight's game. The goals, the expectations are just very, very high. You're talking about a team that has the ability to win their conference, to win a postseason bowl, and perhaps even a national championship. Also, secondly, for Hawaii, because tonight they field a very inexperienced team coming off of a losing season. Second-year head coach Bob Wagner looking at an awful lot in a building process. So all in all, a great challenge for Hawaii tonight. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff for the 1988 football season, Iowa against the Rainbows of Hawaii. Stay with us, everybody. And the Rainbows come out of their tunnel for the 1988 season opener against Iowa. Iowa poised in front of their tunnel, and there you see them, and they're visiting Iowa Hawkeye uniforms, rainbows bunching up around the center of the field, getting ready for the start of this opener. According to the signals from uh, the official, they've already had the cost of the coin. Iowa, I believe, will receive. Hawaii rainbows. showing a lot of enthusiasm as they take to the field, jumping all over each other. And I think that's one ingredient in college sports I've always liked, but something that tonight the Bulls are going to have to maintain is a lot of enthusiasm. Rainbows won the toss, and they elected to defer until the second half. So Iowa will have the ball first. There you see Hayden Fry of the University of Iowa. He is starting his 10th year at the helm of the Hawkeyes. And that is the longest that any coach has been at Iowa. 10 years. Hayden Fry has coached now starting his 27th year at SMU at North Texas State and now at the University of Iowa. And he has repeatedly said he would not want to leave Iowa ever. Oh, they love him back there. He brought respectability, credibility, and national prowess. He's, brought it, he's done it all. Bob Wagner, the Hawaii head coach, just starting out, really just out of the blocks, running that dash that all coaches run. And Wagner, in his second year, five and seven, that's the record he had in 1987. And he really has a big opener tonight against Iowa. There have been many who have said that the Rainbows should not ever open against a nationally ranked team as Iowa because uh, the Rainbows' main concern is winning the Western Athletic Conference. And uh, the Rainbows have to go on the road next week against Colorado State. So tonight, against Iowa, they have to really go up against a team that is a heavy, heavy favorite going in. Well, there's a lot of schools of thought regarding that, and I think the answer will be in a couple of hours. But bottom line is, is this ball club tonight, Bob Wagner's team, the Hawaii ball club, has a great opportunity to gain a lot of experience and much needed experience, you might add, against a nationally ranked team. Kicking off for the Rainbows will be Jason Elam. Great story on Elam. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. He is a true freshman, 5'11", 182 pounder. And he has vowed to bring the Rainbows back to respectability as far as the kicking game is concerned. In the Rainbows' closed practices, he has 
been rumored to kick consistently 50-yard field goals. We saw him warm up before the game tonight, and he was kicking 50-yard field goals. So Jason Elam will kick off one of the great disadvantages that the Rainbows had last year was that when they kicked off, the opponent would have automatic great field position. Mike Saunders, Tony Stewart back deep, along with David Hudson. Saunders number 32, Stewart number 21. If you look at the rainbow bench and we are underway for 1988. It will go to Mike Saunders. To the 10, the 20, the 30, and steps out of bounds. They say on the 29-yard line, first down for Iowa on the 29. Good return. Mike Saunders, a redshirt freshman out of Milton, Wisconsin, pre-law major. So now Hayden Fry and Chuck Hartley confers. Hartley, there you see him, last year 217 completions out of 334 attempts, 3,092 yards, 19 touchdowns. He was intercepted eight times. Very cool under pressure. Delivers the ball to where the ball has to be. First down for Iowa on their own 29. Stewart and Hudson are the running backs. Sweep goes to number 21, Tony Stewart. And Stewart carries rainbow tacklers with him all the way out over the 40 to the 44-yard line. That is enough for a first down. A real key in this ball game for Hawaii's defense is, is to stop Stewart, but to stop Stewart between the tackles, to force him to go outside, not to let him come back on the counter play as he took it that time and run up inside the tackle downfield. They've got to stretch him out there, take advantage of Hawaii's outside speed. There you see the skill positions in the offensive line, Anderson, Poynton, Divis, Cratch, the All-America candidate, and Bob Schmidt. First down and 10 for Iowa. This is Stewart again. Stewart angling off the left side, and Mark Odom made the stop for the rainbow. Short gain on the play. The line of scrimmage, the 44, and they give him forward progress to the 46, second down and eight for Iowa. The defensive line for the rainbows, Dana Directo, 27-year-old junior, Joe Sayomalo and David Stant, the newcomer. The linebackers, Mark Odom, David Maeva, Nu'uano Kaulia, and Gavin Robertson. And that brand new secondary, Michael Colson, Kim McLeod, Mike Tressler, and Walter Briggs, the ex-quarterback. Second down and eight for Iowa. Again, Stewart. Stewart breaks a tackle. The pursuit still after him. Stewart still running into rainbow territory at the 49-yard line. Excellent ad-lib play by Stewart. Not only are Iowa coaches high on Stewart, but so are the Rainbow coaches. He is out of Vauxhall, New Jersey. Last season, 68 carries, 326 yards, and two touchdowns. He was a high school All-America at Union High School in Vauxhall, New Jersey. He made the USA Today list, Parade Magazine, Street and Smith. He was all everything, and they say that he is a great specimen, a great runner. Uh, they, people, they've tabbed him as the Lorenzo White of the Big Ten this year. This is the guy to watch, Tony Stewart. The tailback. He's impressed us thus far with three carries. Travis Watkins is split out to the left side on third down and three from the Rainbow 49. Stewart. 45. 40. Walter Briggs hits him out of bounds inside the 35-yard line, probably at the 32. And so Iowa moving the ball in the opening moments. Well, Bob Schmidt, good block. Good blocking by a lot of people as they seal the Hawaii defense. Just a toss out there to Stewart as he picks up the ball already with four carries, 40 yards on the evening, 10 yards per effort, not bad. But Stewart just showing that ability to get upfield very quickly. Out of the huddle comes Iowa. First down. They put the ball down on the 35-yard line of the Rainbows. First down and 10. Stewart is the tailback. Hartley to throw for the first time at 88. Lays it off to Stewart. Blockers out in front of him. Missed by Sayomalo. He is chased and finally dragged down by Sangapolu. Davita Sangapolu making the stop out of Radford High School, member of the 1981 Cup Bowl champion, Radford in uh, Hawaii. And up for the first down. So the first completion. And it's been the Tony Stewart show as he finally comes over to the sideline. That was just a screen to the tailback. Hartley did a nice job of setting it up. Not a lot of pressure by Hawaii against Hartley because he had plenty of time to get his receiver out there, but the offensive line just did a great job of sealing off the Hawaii players. Hawaii will have to come off the blocks quicker in order to have an effect against this Iowa offense. Gain on the play of 15 yards, first down for Iowa on the 20-yard line of the Rainbow. And we have a timeout called by the Hawkeyes. 12.38 left to play. Opening moments, no score, but Iowa moving. 
want to remind everyone that at the conclusion of tonight's game, Rick and I will be selecting the Hawaiian Tell Rainbow Player of the Game. The University of Hawaii's General Scholarship Fund will receive a $100 cash award in the name of that player from Hawaiian Tell. Double wide receiver to the right. Hartley gives it to Hudson. Hudson hit at the line of scrimmage and then is able to nose forward to the 18-yard line. Making the stop for the Rainbow's Nu'uwano Kaulia out of Waianae, Hawaii. He is a freshman linebacker. Very young Rainbow defense getting its test of fire, and they will be tested early. They will be tested often. Second down and nine from the Rainbow 19. Standing tight end is Cook. This is Stewart. 15, 10, knocked out of bounds by Briggs on the eight-yard line. Walter Briggs making his second tackle of the game, and Stewart picks up another first down for Iowa. It is now first and goal for the Hawkeyes. Well, he got some excellent blocking up there, and I gotta believe that Bob Cratch didn't have an ISO on him up there. They left on the left side at the offensive tackle, doing a great job of sealing down not one but two players and letting Stewart break out. They're getting a good kick out block, and Stewart just finds the seam and up the sideline. Travis Watkins, number two, to the far side, and John Falloon to the near side as the wide receiver. Tailback is Stewart. They give it to Hudson. Bumps off a man at the line of scrimmage. Able to back his way inside the five-yard line. And it will be second down and goal. David Maeva there to make the stop for the Rainbows. Maeva out of Kailua and Kamehameha. Second down and goal for Iowa. As they have really put together an impressive opening drive. 11 minutes, 31 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Iowa to the line. Ball is on the three. In motion is Bass. Ball is given to Stewart. Looking for running room. And Stewart is hit by Jamie Collins. Ex excuse me, Michael Colson. Michael Colson out of Long Beach, California. And Long Beach City College made the first hit. Loss on the play of one. Third down for Iowa. Take a look at it. They're going to come up up inside with Stewart. Almost on a, on a power eye play. And the defense led by Colson gets right up in there. Good penetration. And that's what stopped that play. Colson from Long Beach City College. Junior college transfer. Third down. Big play for Iowa. Stewart trying for the corner. He will not make it. Dana Directo pressured him out of bounds for the Rainbows. It will be fourth down. And the question now, will Iowa go for it or will they go for the field goal? That ball just inside the four-yard line. Well, you would ordinarily expect them to kick a field goal here, but they've had such success in moving down the field, I believe that they're going to go for it on fourth and goal. Richard Bass coming in with the play. Well, if you're rated in the top ten, you're one of the favorites to go to the Rose Bowl. You've already been picked by one publication to win the national championship. You go for it on fourth down. They come out in the power eye. Ball is given to Bass, to the two, to the one. And he didn't make it. He did not get in. Well, that played right into the hands of Hoy right there. They gave him a chance for a goal line stand. The old classic cliche, the defense bend. It didn't break. They held when they had to. Admittedly, it puts the offense in deep field position. But what a nice uh, morale builder, if you will, for that defense. A little bit of confidence early on. They went with the misdirection to Bass. And Maeva came up. The rest of the team, again, the defense penetrated. And they held. First down for the Rainbows. This is the first offensive play of the 88 season. And they are deep in their own territory. They come out in a power up. Ball is given to Cody Fakaba. He may have fumbled the ball. He was up in the air, and he was able to juggle, but hang on. Out to the two, perhaps. See where they unpile. Good defensive front, including All-America candidate Dave Haight. There you see the backs and receivers for the Rainbows. Skill position. Second down and nine from their own two-yard line. Again, the power eye. Hey, Cody Fakava looking for running room. Wrapped up at the five. Triple team to the turf. Good swarming defense. The defense for Iowa, and they are formidable. Dave Haight, the Outland Trophy candidate. Jeff Keppel, J. 
Jim Johnson, Joe Mott, Tyrone Berry. That's that front five. Then Jim Riley and Brad Quast, two outstanding linebackers. And then Pipkins, Brown, Stoops, and Hanks. And that defensive secondary for Iowa. Third down for the Rainbows. Third and seven from their own four. Ball is kept by Warren Jones. Running room, the 10, the 12. First down. Good looking play, good blocking by Hawaii as they get Jones to the outside. Warren running, looking very quickly, but the key there is that Hawaii was able to seal off Iowa and create enough of a lane there for Jones as we take a look at it out of the power eye formation. He'll fake the ball in there to Hey Cody. Hey Cody goes upfield. Warren comes out around behind the block as he gets upfield, finds the seam, and picks up an all important first down for Hawaii. So the first first down of the game for the Rainbows. They have some running room now as they come out. And for the first time, we see the spread formation. Now timeout is momentarily called. Chris Roscoe had lined up on the near side, and we see a penalty play. As we wait for that, Jim, there's something I did want to mention early on. There's a great matchup out there tonight. We've mentioned Dave Haight from Iowa a couple of times at 6'3", 270, the Outland candidate. He is going head up against Amosa Amosa, Hawaii's strongest offensive player. For the dead ball. Encroachment, illegal procedure. On illegal the procedure offense, against the rainbow. Referee Pat Sweeney. On a dead ball penalty. I don't know if that was a Hawaii play that came off the field on the wrong side, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not quite sure what that was. But I think that's what I saw happening, Jim. So that penalty moves the ball back to the eight yard line where it will be first and 15. But the rainbows come out in the double slot. McCarthy and Lopati in motion is. Lopati. Jones, first pass. It is complete. Hey, Cody Pacaba, 15, 20 yard line. Mark Stoops made the stop for Iowa. Second down and three for the Rainbow. They hit Pacaba out of the backfield in the flat against a zone defense that is notorious, a team that's notorious for playing a lot of zone and a soft zone at that. And with Johnson's squared offense, Hawaii, that is, they expect to be able to throw underneath that. Again, the spread offense, second down and three for the Rainbows at their own 20-yard line. In motion is Dane MacArthur. Jones to throw. Lopati, first down at the 25. And nice to see Junior in the ball game out there at that position, a little out pattern, good protection. Jones with the ball right on the money. Good accuracy by the quarterback thus far in his passes. Mark Stoops out of Youngstown, Ohio. Brothers Bobby and Mike were all Big Ten strong safeties at Iowa, so he continues in that tradition. First down for the Rainbow, second first down of the game and the season. Roscoe to the left, Larry Kahn Smith to the right. That five-man front for Iowa. In motion, Junior Lopati. A Cody Fakava. Nose is out over the 25 to the 27, gain of two. Jeff Keppel, the defensive Lineman number 51 and Dave Haight number 64. Haight, the 1987 Big Ten Defensive Lineman of the Year. And if Hawaii can make any yardage tonight running against Haight and Keppel and Johnson and people like that, then there's a lot of reason to be optimistic for this season because those are very formidable people down there. Second and eight for the Rainbows. On the ball at the 27. Lopati again in motion. Jones looking to the near side. Throws Lopati. 35, 38-yard line. First down. Good work. Again, good protection by the offensive line. Warren Rowe to his left. Junior gets open right in the seam. Again, against his own defense. Good protection by the offensive line. They're able to hit him. And Lopati making his presence felt very early on here in 1988. So the Rainbows have a drive of their own going. They have the ball just outside their own 38-yard line. Again, the spread formation. First and 10 for the Rainbows. Ball is kept by Jones. Over the 40 to the 43. Jim Riley made the stop. Riley out of Dubuque, Iowa. He began as a walk-on. His brother, Mike, was an All-American linebacker at Iowa. And he is one of the five 1988 team captains. That's number 95 for the Hawkeyes. Clayton Mahuka now has come into the game as one of the slot backs. Mahuka along with MacArthur. Con Smith, 86, is to the right and Roscoe to the left. Lone running back is a Cody Fakava. He is now joined by Mahuka. 
Ball is kept by Jones. Has running room. 45, 50. Into Iowa territory to the 46. First down, Rainbow. Good looking option play into the boundary that time. Hawaii running the option into the short side of the field. Picking up good blocking, but here it's Jones. He guys rides it nice into the fullback. He comes out. He looks. He plays off. He plays nicely off the cornerback as he fakes. Gets the lane and comes up inside. Good execution by Warren Jones. Five minutes, 50 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. No score. Iowa and the Rainbows. Con Smith to the right and Roscoe to the left. First down for the Rainbows on the Iowa 46-yard line. In motion is MacArthur. Jones looking. Checks off of MacArthur in trouble. Throws as he's hit over the middle. Is almost intercepted. Boy, that was risky business. He was in the grasp. He was going down. He let it go. And why the ball wasn't intercepted back there, I don't know. As we take a look at it on the replay, Warren getting deep for the first time tonight. Tries to get away. Very alertly picked up by Joe Mott, who gets him in the grasp. As I said, the ball goes up center field. And luckily for Hawaii, the ball is not intercepted. Brian Wise in that area. The safety for Iowa. Second down and 10 from the Iowa 46-yard line for the Rainbows. Jones to Con Smith, but he makes the catch on his knees and loses two yards. Back outside the 48-yard line. Say one thing about the Rainbows, the play calling, the different looks as Iowa off balance for the moment. 5-11 left here in the first quarter. That's a very good point. Paul Johnson has come out here tonight mixing it up real well against his defense. We've seen an awful lot of different plays out there by the Hawaii offense, and they're executing well. Third and 12. From the 48-yard line of Iowa, Chris Gaskell now has come in at wide receiver. In motion is Mahuka, number 16. Jones looks to the near sideline. Still looking. Has all day. Throws over the middle. Intercepted and then dropped. Almost Jim Riley. Number 95, the linebacker. He's also the long snapper on offense. Had it in his hands momentarily. Fourth down for the Rainbows. They will have to punt for the first time this season. Nice protection, that's what I want to say in that play, Jim. And the big thing is that the offense took the ball on its own one-yard line and got it up into Iowa territory to set up this punt. A good job by the offense in their opening series tonight. Kyle Alou, 37.8 average and 87, kicking for the first time. It is taken by Peter Marciano. And Marciano is hit inside the 20-yard line. First down for Iowa. 4.36 left to play in the first quarter. No score. So both teams have been able to put together drives. Iowa coming up one yard short of a touchdown. And it will be first and 10 for Iowa on their own 19-yard line. Hartley at quarterback. Hartley gives it up the middle. Richard Bass carries to the 23. One of the byproducts of that nice opening series by Hawaii's offense was it allowed the Hawaii defense to get over there on the sideline with Rich Ellison and his group of coaches and talk and make some adjustments perhaps after that opening series because Hawaii was able to keep the ball for some time. Look for some adjustments by this Hawaii defense. And on the play of around four yards, we'll call it four and a half. Second down, five and a half to go. Ball on their own 23, they shift out of the yard. Hartley looks to the sideline, throws. It is complete to John Falloon. Up on the 33-yard line, they'll put it at the 32, and that will be enough for an Iowa first down. Iowa now with five first downs. We'll take a look at it. Falloon does a nice job. Short drop. Chuck Hotley rolls a little bit to his left. Falloon comes down with the ball. Good concentration. Gets his feet in there. Nice looking catch there by the freshman wide receiver, John Falloon. Hotley two for two so far in passing. 357 remaining here in the first quarter, no score. Ball is carried by Hudson. Big hole, 40, still on his feet. All the way out to the 44-yard line. Walter Briggs able to trip him up. Actually, Bridge just, Briggs just grabbed an ankle and held on. We're going to take a nice look at it here as Hudson gets a nice block. You see the offense just sealing down. Trap block coming over. Hudson gets the ball deep, cuts it back up. Good blocking, people down on the field. White jersey's doing a good job, and Hudson just shows that strength and speed at the same time. Hudson out of Waxahachie, Texas, 13th on the Iowa career rushing list, number 20. First down for Iowa. Hudson again. Hudson hit at the line of scrimmage, fumbled the ball. Joe Sayamalo can't hold it. Briggs chasing it. 
Briggs recovers, and the Rainbows, let's see, will have it inside the 30. What a great break for Hawaii. This just place has gone crazy here. The ball was kicked, bounced out there. Good defensive play. They forced the fumble as, as a result of contact. Briggs very alertly was just able to get the ball. Started going out of bounds, but boy, the ball went up the field about 15 yards. Well, the Rainbows have an excellent opportunity now. If we take another look at that play, you can see the hit by Mark Odom. Hudson fumbles the ball. Gavin Robertson, the first man in the area. And then the ball pops loose, and Walter Briggs does an excellent job of grabbing the ball just before he went out of bounds. Boy, if you wanted something right there, you couldn't have ordered it any better than that. Three minutes, 22 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And the Rainbows with the first golden opportunity, really, in this game on a turnover. They come out in the spread formation. Roscoe to the left, Con Smith to the right. Ball is given to Fakava. The 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! As he battled up the sideline, broke tackles at least several going downfield and got in the end zone. Rainbows appear to be a man short as they line up. Jason Elam trying for the extra point. The man short was the holder. You do That's need Kyle Alou. Kick is up. And it is good. We look at the scoreboard at Aloha Stadium. Three minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Hawaii 7, Iowa nothing. 7-0 Hawaii, 28-yard touchdown run by Heikoti Fakava. Great blocking, as you can see it, but it's really Fakava because from this point on here, he starts breaking the tackles as he fights to get to the outside. They're coming over, I think it's Stoops right there. He does not go down. Great determination by Heikoti. Good team play all the way, but you've got to hand it to number 17. He wanted the end zone. Heikoti Fakava out of Moanalua High School. Kicking off will be Jason Elam. 7 nothing Rainbows, 3 minutes, 13 seconds. Reminding here in the first quarter, the Rainbows converting a fumble by Hudson and turning it into a touchdown. Here's the kickoff by Elam. That will be caught by Saunders at the 1. 10, 20, hit by Robertson, and down he goes at the 30-yard line. Gavin Robertson making the stop. Robertson out of Seattle, Washington. 31-yard return. So despite Elam kicking the ball well, Hawaii still had a little bit of trouble on those kickoffs, allowing him to come back out up to the 30. And then you take a quick look at Hot Leap's stats, two for two thus far. So now Iowa trailing seven to nothing has the ball just over their own 30-yard line. Travis Watkins and Dean Harbert are wide to the far side. Hot Leap to throw, has the time, looking. Gives it to Travis Watkins on a crossing pattern at the 36. It will be second down and four. Hartley is now three for three. And Watkins got himself open nicely. In fact, Hawaii was run off that time. Iowa's receiver just got downfield, opened up that zone. It was a big lane. Watkins on the out pattern, as you see it, does a nice job of holding on to the ball. But they, by design, the pass pattern just cleared everybody out of there. So Hartley now three for three for 30 yards, second down and four. For Iowa, who trails seven to nothing. This is Stewart, 40, 45, look out. He's in the clear, the 30, the 20, one man to beat. He beats him. Robert Lamb misses him at the five, and now Iowa scores. Yes, and there are no flags. And that was, as Pacaba was for Hawaii, determined that was all Tony Stewart. Good blocking up front to get him out there into the secondary, but after that, you saw the great athletic ability, the speed, the determination. He knew where he was going. So Stewart with a 64-yard touchdown romp. And once he gets out in the open, he really can turn on the speed. That's exactly what he did there. So now, 
in to try the extra point is Jeff Skillett, red shirt freshman, number 11. Out of the hold of Matt Rogers. And this game is time. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Iowa comes right back to tie. Both teams have seven. Jeff Skillett will kick off for Iowa. Tied at seven. Ball will go to Larry Con smith at the four. 15, 20. Out over the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the white shirts around him. Take a look at this touchdown run by Tony Stewart. Uh, I think one of the key things right here is just a toss now to the tailback. He takes it deep. As we've seen it, missed tackles right there. They were able to get the block on Odom. They kicked him out. He cut it back up inside, broke two tackles. And then as we see it here, he does a nice job of open field running as he stops, changes direction, cuts, breaks it upfield, and gets into the end zone. First down for the Rainbows. The ball at the 26-yard line. Spread formation with the double slots and the wide receivers. Warren Jones, the quarterback, in motion is MacArthur, number 28. Jones, short pattern, a Cody Fakaba cannot hold on. And he's thrown to the turf by Stoops. Mark Stoops, number 41. Stoops, of course, was the last man for Iowa before hey, Cody Fakaba got to the end zone. So Stoops is not pleased at all. He's in a foul mood right now. <laughs> but that time again, Hawaii looking like they're going to have some success against his zone defense from Iowa as they got the fullback into the flat, and he was open. And Cody drops the ball, but he was open nonetheless. Two minutes, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. This game tied at seven. Second down and 10 from the 26. And movement. Almosa, Mosa, the center for the Rainbow's Fiery now. I, and I don't think that Warren Jones was expecting to get the ball at that point. What happened was Dave Haight jumped and it was almost some movement in there, and then Amosa snapped the ball. I don't know, you know, obviously we don't know up here what the count was, but the team wasn't ready to go on that, and I don't know, what, maybe Amosa with a quick snap was hoping to get an offside, an offside situation, but Hate stayed in on his side of the ball. It's now third down and nine. They actually counted that play. Sure. I think he was snapping it to try to take advantage of the encroachment. He thought Hate would be offside, but he wasn't. Third and nine for the Rainbows. Jones looks to the near sideline. Checks off, Bean Chase gets away from Mutt. Now he'll run, 30, 31, short of the first down. Well, a nifty bit of ad-libbing. I thought that he might have had some receivers open downfield. We'll take a look at it, but I saw some green jerseys open. We've got an ISO on Roscoe on the opposite side. Now as he comes down, he runs a crossing pattern through the field. Seems to be wide open there. Warren's running around. Roscoe's still keeping himself in the open, as you can see, but obviously Warren didn't pick him up. Fourth down, Alou, and to punt for the second time. Good hang time. Waiting for it is Marciano. Takes it at the 24. He'll return it. 30, 31. Mark Odom made the first hit for the Rainbows, and it will be first down for Iowa. Iowa scored with lightning Big Ten, top ten efficiency last time on the run by Tony Stewart. I think we have to mention, though, Peter Marciano being the nephew of the former great Rocky Heavyweight Marciano. champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. In fact, he's from Brockton, Massachusetts. Yes, he is. But not the same stature. 5'9", maybe, but 165 is not going to make a heavyweight contender. Yeah, he's a middleweight contender. <laughs> yeah. First oh. down for Iowa. Watkins to the near side. And to the far side is John Falloon. Ball is given up the middle. Carrying is David Hudson. Hudson to the 35-yard line. Hudson started the game at fullback. He is now in there at tailback. And we have a penalty fly. It's to Pat Sweeney holding Iowa. 39 seconds left to play in the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Rainbows going into this game as the decided underdogs have played spirited football here in the first quarter and, and this, actually led seven to nothing in this series for the defense as you see the penalty being called very key now because it becomes a matter of poise and confidence after that last big touchdown run by stewart and the quickness with which iowa was able to come back the defense has to regroup in a hurry and not give up the big play they cannot miss tackle they have to get to the point of attack and wrap those arms john falloon to the near side slotted inside of falloon is tavis watkins back to pass hartley 
Sideline pattern coming back for it is Falloon, and he's hit immediately by Colson of the Rainbows. But that should be enough for a first down out over the 30-yard line. And we'll see what they give him forward progress. And they say that he made the reception at the 34, just short of the 35. Take another look at it. Hotley comes back, drops, sets up. Balloon just running the out pattern there. Colson coming over to cover him, but you can see Hawaii showing a lot of respect back there for the receivers from Iowa. That's the end of the first quarter. Iowa 7, Hawaii 7. Bob Wagner, no doubt very proud of the way his team has played in the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven tie against Iowa. And on the other side, Caden Fry, the coach of the Hawkeyes, starting his 10th year. He's got some, uh, perhaps, question marks, but very confident nonetheless. Caden Fry, the way he has marketed Iowa, is a story in itself. The Pittsburgh Steeler-like uniforms put in Iowa every chance he can in the sport light spotlight. Well, he put the Tiger Hawk in, too, which has become a national uh, mark. Second down. We start the second quarter. And Hudson in trouble. Briggs, Odom, Colson finally wrestle him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That will bring a third down and a big loss on that floor. Well, we saw a couple different things there. First of all, we saw Hudson's strength because he was hit by several Hawaii players at the line but wouldn't go out he kept going bouncing out but the good thing that we saw on the hawaii side of the ball is that they kept coming and sure enough bricks came who's a very good open field tackler and finally got the wraps on hudson good defensive play they never gave up on him iowa 109 total yards in the first quarter and hawaii 77. third down and 11. hardly perfect four for four Nothing over the middle. Now he throws, and it is complete. He's now five for five. And what a hit by number 37 for the Rainbows. And that's Mike Tressler. And he has become the darling of the coaching staff. Tressler out of Kauai, the island of Kauai and Kauai High School. He has really come on in that secondary. And you can see the way he hit. Great hit by Tressler, but somehow Hotley was able to get his receiver between the safeties. And you saw Tressler and Briggs there, and he found them to pick up the first down. Hartley is now five for five. Out of the huddle comes Iowa. Standing tight end is All-America candidate Marv Cook. Hartley throws over the middle. It is complete to Falloon. And Falloon inside Rainbow Territory to the 41. He was chased by McLeod. Kim McLeod, but McLeod, oh, about 15 yards behind him. Good pattern run by Falloon. Well, the Bulls opened up wide in the zone defense there, and they knew just where to go as Falloon crosses over the middle, wide open. You see Kosa coming up, but there was no need for, for him as it, Falloon fell down. Hotley getting good protection, but more importantly, he knows where to look for his receivers and gets the ball there. Hardly so far perfect. Out of the huddle comes Iowa. First down. From the 36-yard line of the Rainbows, a delay around the near side, Bass carries, and Maeva rides into the turf. Here's a look at the first quarter statistical comparison between the two teams, rushing yards, 118 for Iowa, 62 for the Rainbows, and in passing yards, 44 for Iowa, 27 for the Rainbows, and there you see the total yards. Second down for Iowa. The ball just outside the Rainbow 31. A 7-7 tie. We are in the second quarter. 12 minutes and 50 seconds remain to be played. Ball is given on a sweep. This is Stewart. Run down from behind. Good defensive play by the Rainbow. See when they unpile and Mark Odom is on the bottom. Well, as we said earlier, the Hawaii coaches, particularly Rich Ellison, talking about his young defense here, really very high on the quickness to the outside. You, there you saw that time Odom there. And they felt that they could force Iowa to try to go to a perimeter game that they'd have, you know, they'd have a strong effect on them. But you could see Stewart just had such great ability to stop and change direction. Odom moving from outside linebacker last year to inside linebacker this year. Third down and two. Ball at the rainbow 27. Stewart again. And he is headbutted at the 26-yard line. Very close to the first down. Alan Smith from Waimanalo. And he is a transfer from Clemson University. They may measure this, but I think he has it, Jim. 
They're going to bring out the stakes. You see Sweeney calling for it, but I think he just picked up enough. Twelve oh one left. Ooh, they're short. They are short fourth down. They know that will go. They are in go territory. Ball just outside uh, the rainbow 25. So they will probably come in with the power eye. John Palmer comes in as an extra tight end for Iowa. And look for David Hudson, the fullback, or Tony Stewart. Bass is also in there. Probably the call will go to Hudson. Number 20, nope, it's going to be Hartley. He backs to the 25, and that's enough for the first down. All he had to do was just stick his helmet over the 25-yard line. And the most I, simple way to do it. And Iowa is showing some respect for that penetrating defense that Hawaii displayed early on in that goal line stand. They weren't going to take any chances with sailing that ball off, get it to Hartley, and have him sneak over the top. So it's a bit of a compliment to that young Hawaii defense. 11.44 left to play in the first half. A 7-7 tie. Away scoring first. 28-yard run by Hikoti Fakaba. Then Tony Stewart coming back with a 64-yard jaunt to tie. Back to pass Hartley. He's been perfect. Looks, throws, and complete to Cook. To Marv Cook, the All-America tight end. Makes his first reception of the 88 season. Cook out of West Branch, Iowa, second in receiving for tight ends in Iowa history, and last year he caught 49 passes. Okay, there you see the drop back, excellent protection, nobody around Hotley, he moves a little bit to his left, he allows Cook to get downfield, run that little curl, hits him perfectly, Hawaii playing that zone, showing some respect, Marv Cook, the great tight end, gets open, Hotley knows where he is and hits him. Hotley now seven for seven. They come out in a power eye. First down and goal to go on the six-yard line. Carrying the ball is Stewart. Touchdown, Iowa. Getting into the corner. And Iowa takes the lead for the first time in this game, 13 to 7. Great job by the Hawkeye offensive line. They just came off. They sealed everybody. Stewart takes a little pitch. And it was just him in the end zone. Here you see it right there. They do a nice job. They get their backs out in front. It's all Stewart needed. There was just a lane right there as you watch it as he crosses into the end zone. Tony Stewart's second touchdown run of this game, and Iowa up by a score of 13 to 7. That brings cheers from the few Iowa fans that occupy the corner here at uh, Aloha Stadium. Skillet in to try the extra point. And that is perfect. 10.59 remaining to be played in the first half. Iowa 14, Hawaii 7. Iowa scoring drive, 10 plays. 69 yards, lap time 4 minutes 46 seconds, and Tony Stewart is second touchdown run of the game this one a short 6 yarder into the corner for the score, Iowa leads Hawaii 14 to 7 well, you know we'll mention Tony Stewart's name a lot tonight and, and rightfully so, but that offensive line Jim is extremely impressive both in pass protection and on running plays kickoff, waiting for it as Larry Conn Smith takes it at the 2 the 15 the 20 the 30, and he's ridden down over the 30-yard line by James Pipkins, number four for Iowa. First down for the Rainbow. So Warren Jones will come in now for the Rainbows, and for the first time in this game, the Rainbows trail 14 to 7. Real nice run back by Con Smith. There we had a chance to see some of that, they say, world-class speed of his on that return. Warren Jones in the spread formation, first down for the Rainbows at their own 33-yard line. In motion is Dane MacArthur, number 28. Rolling to the near side is Jones, throws, and Gaskell comes back and makes the catch at the 42, gain of nine. Nice out pattern by Chris Gaskell. Again, the wide receiver running the running an out pattern. Jones coming out there for cover in front of him. Nice protection, and Warren just delivers the ball to Chris. Gaskill on the out here. Again, Iowa in a zone defense, giving some room. Jones looking around, reads it real well and delivers it real well. Jones now five for seven, 36 yards for the Rainbow. Second down and one. All at their own 42 yard line. Jones with a long count, looks over a four man front. 
and maybe calling an audible. Just got the play off. Ball is given up the middle to Hakoti for Carver, and he's swallowed up by the white shirts. And we have a penalty flag, illegal shift against the Rainbow. That's tough because in talking with Paul Johnson earlier in the week, the Hawaii offensive coordinator, in looking at the offense and how it will have adjusted from last year's team, he felt the ability to audibleize at the line of scrimmage would be a definite plus. The understanding by Warren of the offense, reading the defenses and what to do. And that time he did, as you said, Jimmy, audibleize, but the shift was illegal and it came back to haunt him here with a five-yard penalty. Second down now and six from their own 37-yard uh, line. 14 to seven in favor of Iowa. 10 minutes and 36 seconds left to play in the first half. Roscoe to the left and Gaskell to the right. Mahuka and also Dane MacArthur are the slapbacks. Quick pass, complete to Mahuka. That's enough for the first down up at the 49-yard line. What a nice looking pass by Jones. He drilled that ball in there. Greg Brown covered on the play for Iowa. We're talking right in the seam here. Now Warren comes back, just a little bit of play action to Hey Cody. Comes back, sets up, delivers it nicely. Clayton gets right there in the seam and, and behind the linebackers and Warren knew right where to go. Roscoe to the left again, Gaskell to the right. Mahuka and MacArthur again, the, the slot backs and a hook, Cody for cover, the running back. Linebackers start to jump around for Iowa. Ball is kept by Jones, 50. And he is ankle tackled at the 48-yard line. Good job that time by Brad Quest, the linebacker, number 35, 6'2", 240. Honorable mention last year, all Big Ten. When he's the guy, the offense has to block in order for the quarterback to have success in that option. If that linebacker doesn't get sealed off to the inside, he's going to pursue, and Quest is excellent at that and run it down inside out. They've got to pick him up in order for that play to go. Number 36, Billy Stevens now in at running back for the Rainbows. Second down for the Rainbows and six from the 48-yard line of Iowa. Again, MacArthur in motion as they overload the right side. The pass is complete to MacArthur, and he is hit out of bounds at the 42-yard line, very close to the first down. Uh, real close. I won't care to say whether they got it or not, but it's going to be real close. Again, Warren, Jim, I think in the last two passes, throwing real good zip on the ball. Here we watch it coming, rolling to his right. Really lets it fly. They throws it real tough. Dang, nice catch on an out pattern. Double coverage there by number four, James Pipkins, and number 41, Mark Stoops for Iowa. And they will measure. And I won't guess. It looks close. I'll tell you, real close. Nice execution. Good protection by the Hawaii offensive line. On the last couple of pass plays, they've done a nice job of giving Warren the time he needs. Let me ask you this, and I know it's early, Rick. But the way that uh, the quarterback, Warren Jones, is making decisions here in 88, one of the criticisms last year when they put in the spread offense was that he wasn't making the right decisions. Tonight, I think he is. He is. And that's a, that's a tribute to the coaching in the offseason, the concentration, time to lose the offense, learn the offense, rather. And I think perhaps maybe even some of the adjustments that they've made based on Warren's abilities and trying to tailor their offensive play calling to the things that he can do and decide best. And I think we're seeing that manifested here in the first half tonight. Roscoe and Gasco, the wide receivers. MacArthur and Mahuka, the slot backs. Billy Stevens, the running back. First and 10 for the Rainbows at the 41-yard line of Iowa. Again, Jones lays it off for MacArthur to the 39. MacArthur triple teamed out of bounds there. He ran into everybody, including middle guard Dave Haight. Brad Quast was there and also Greg Brown. Number 29, up from the secondary. Well, let's go back to the previous comments. Although that play only picked up a few yards, again, good decision by Warren Jones. As he looked downfield, saw nobody, picked up his heart receiver, releasing late out of the backfield. He knew where to go. The decisiveness of the quarterback, real key thus far. Triple wide receivers now to the left side. Gaskell, lone receiver on the right. Second down. Jones looking. Throws. It is a leaping catch at the 25-yard line. Chris Roscoe, who played at least a couple of games for the Rainbow basketball team last uh, spring, shows his jumping ability there. Well, Chris showing a lot of athletic ability out here now. As we said earlier, Iowa likes to play his own defense. Hawaii felt that they could throw underneath it and into it, and this time here, you could see they gave Roscoe a couple yard cushion. He came back, and Warren zipped the ball in there. Nice play all the way around. Ball is on the 28-yard line of Iowa. In motion is MacArthur. Again, Jones has the time. Throws. Tipped. Incomplete. 
And he was looking for Roscoe again up the sideline, just over the stakes. Tipped but by Greg Brown, number 29. Good job by Brown. Brown, 6'1", 180 out of Iowa City. Honorable mention, all Big Ten last year. Had three interceptions last season for the Hawkeyes. Second down and 10 for the Rainbows. Ball just outside the Hawkeye, 27 yard line. 7.45 left to play in the first half. 14 to 7 Iowa, but the Rainbows are threatening. They have put together a very solid drive. Ball is given to Hey Cody Picapa, big hole, 20, 15, 10, still on his feet, the five, the one yard line. Oh, what a run. That's nothing but guts and determination as the crowd comes alive again. Picapa breaking tackles, showing great determination early on in this ball game. 26 yard run. All hot as we watch it up in here. Just a quick trap. They come right through the line of scrimmage, breaks it up. You can see the offensive lineman sealing the linebackers. They give him the lane, and the rest is take holding as he breaks tackles and puts the ball down inside the one. Torque hook. Throw down for Kaba at the one yard line. First down, goal to go for the Rainbow at the one. They come out in the power line. Ball is given up the middle, but penalty flag. We'll wait and see what the call is. This is where you don't want to self-destruct. Illegal procedure against the Rainbow. So that play goes for North. The tough break. You see Bob Wagner over there with his arms up in the air saying, tell me where. Illegal procedure. Dead ball foul that moves the ball back outside the five-yard line. And that hurt. Rainbow's had a first and goal to go at the one. I didn't see where they called that, Jim. It seemed like the foes lined up and just took the snap and, and the ball with the the whistle was blowing before they could really even do that. I didn't see where the procedure came. As Wags looks for an explanation. Larry Jones is lined up in that power eye with Stevens and Pacaba. Ball is kept by Jones, trying for the outside. He has a chance. He, does he get in? No, they say no, I don't believe it. Boy, was that close. Pacaba arguing. They're not going to give it to him. That is close. That's you said a mouthful. That's about as close as you're going to get. You can see the fans don't really care for the call. We've got a great look at it coming up right here. We watch it. It seems to me the ball breaks the plane. I say that's a touchdown. He got robbed. Well, that ball is as close as you can get. That ball's in the end zone, James. That's how close it is. Should have been six for Hawaii. Rainbows will come up now. Second down, goal to go. Again, the power on. Jones gives it to Pacaba. Touchdown, Rainbow. That's athletic justice coming through. Pacaba gets a chance for the touchdown. Jones had scored. Nonetheless, they make sure that this time, and a little bit of fist of cuts down in the end zone. These are Hawaii players in Iowa. And I'll tell you, tempers are raising right now. That's a here down there making his presence felt. Well, the Rainbows right now have a chance to be even with them at 14 as you take another look at that touchdown run by Hikoti Pacabo. And looking at that replay, excellent blocking up front as they got the white jerseys out of the way. Hikoti kept the ball, stayed low, got into the end zone, but good blocking by Hawaii's offensive line. 14-13. Now Jason Elam out of the hold of Kyle Alou. A chance to tie this game with 6.49 left to play in the first half. This game is tied at 14. Rainbow 67 yards in 10 plays. Four minutes, three seconds of last time for Kaba. Second touchdown of the game, a one-yard run. And the Rainbows have tied this at 14. So Iowa... Playing a team that was picked fifth in the Western Athletic Conference, seventh in the Western Athletic Conference. Rainbows have given Iowa everything the Hawkeyes have wanted and more. But we're in the first half. Tony Stewart at the goal line. He can run, remember. 15, look out. 20. And he falls down. Sean Kinney Lau covers him up. Out over the 25 at the 27. First down, Iowa. And remember, Hartleap has been perfect in this game as far as throwing passes. He is seven for seven. 
The onus is really on the defense now to toughen up, tighten up, try to shut Hotley down, get some pressure on him, make some penetration against that offensive line. Jim, I've got to say this, one of the great byproducts, obviously, of the offense in this first half is the tremendous confidence that Warren Jones himself must be feeling as he's engineered two nice drives. Well, actually, you wonder how the cover broke, how there was a long run, but Warren is working the offense nicely. Hardly back to throw number eight. Can he make eight in a row? Certainly. Right to uh, Cook. Out over the 30, the big tight end. Marv Cook, the All-America candidate, carries to the 33-yard line, but we have a penalty flag. Maybe holding on Iowa. It is. Hartley had 14 straight completions against Minnesota. He had four touchdown passes in one quarter last season against Northwestern. And he had seven touchdown passes in that game against Northwestern. But the holding penalty moves the ball back inside the 20-yard line to the 18, where it will be first down and 20. And Hartley, for all intents and purposes, probably will put the ball in the air again. Audibleizing. He does not. Toss to Hudson. Hudson chased down from behind. Excellent play by the Rainbows. The ball pops loose. It is picked up by Colson, but the play falls dead. Dana Directo chased down the ball carrier Hudson. The Rainbows really playing tough on that defense. Well, we'll take a look at it as we watch Directo fight off the blocks and make the run down from the inside out, as you see here. But then Mark Odom also comes over, along with a couple of other players, David Maeva. Good pursuit by the Hawaii defense, and they're showing their ability to get outside in a hurry. So the play was blown dead before the ball was fumbled. Second down and 18. Gain of two yards on that last play. Passing formation, double slot for Iowa. Hartley looking. He's eight for eight. He throws. It is complete to Travis Watkins. And now it, they say incomplete. Bounced away from him. Watkins was open. Well, the guy that makes the play is Mike Tressler. Watkins is open. The ball gets delivered. And as you say, it was complete. As we watch it on the replay, just as he takes it in, Watkins Tressler comes over. He's not going to let him catch it. Just enough to get in there and get the ball away from him. You see the strip technique? He got his arms around him, pulled his hands away from the football, and would not allow him to bobble that ball back into his possession. So Good Hartley, job by Tressler. Hartley's string ends at 8. He is now 8 for 9. Third down and 18. Again, a double slot for Iowa. Single running back. Hartley backpedals. Robertson chases it. Hartley throws over the middle. It is broken up. Odom intended for Marv Cook. And the Rainbows are playing defense. Good play by Mark Odom, but Gavin Robertson, the great quick outside linebacker that time, put the pressure on Hotley as we look at it. Robertson rushes in, Hotley gets it out, but they credit Mark Odom. He's in perfect position, making the contact, removing the football. Nice execution by the defense. Five minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Kicking is Marv Cook. Ball bounces inside the 40. It is taken by Walter Briggs there, and Briggs... It's swallowed up right at the 40-yard line. First down for the Rainbows. 5.29 left in the first half. We are tied at 14. So you see the story of this game. 5.29 left to play in the first half. Iowa 14. Hawaii 14. Warren Jones 8 for 13. 59 yards. And the Rainbows have the ball at their own 40-yard line. Very solid field position as they begin this drive with 5.29 left to play in the half. A Cody Fakaba, the single setback. Again, the spread formation. And Warren Jones was played excellently in this first half. Junior Lopati, the 50, and Lopati down at the 49-yard line. And who can forget Junior Lopati's run against San Diego State and his knee injury as he crossed the goal line years ago, way back in 1984. Well, party's nothing but a, but a testament to guts and persistence and perseverance. But here, Junior shows great quickness, getting that toss, getting it to the outside, and getting upfield. Real determination by Junior Lopati. Lopati with six operations on that knee. First down for the Rainbows on the 49-yard line of Iowa. Again, the spread formation. Fumble. Does Jones get it back? He does. Second down and 10. And the ball will be at midfield. 5-16 left. Rainbows have played very prideful football here in the first half. Hawaii's offensive line doing a good job, too. 
And we have not heard the name of Dave Haight too much in this game. <laughs> you kind of took the words out of my mouth. I think we've heard a little bit more about Mott, Joe Mott, the other big defensive end. So that's a real credit to Omosa Omosa, who, as we said, has is, is, is become the leader of that offensive line and the Hawaii offense of neutralizing the great All-American Outland candidate, Dave Haight. Second down, it will be second down and 11 from midfield, and our time momentarily called with 4.41 left. Amosa Amosa does not like the texture of that football, so they will change it. Second and 11, Larry Con smith to the near side. Daniel Ahuna, number 29, into the game, slotted inside of Con smith Long count. And much time left, about 11 seconds before he had to snap the ball. Jones throws, sideline pattern, leaping attempt by Roscoe, incomplete. At the 32-yard line, third down at 11 for midfield. Greg Brown covering on the play for the Hawkeye. The play was there, though. The protection was there. Warren got back. Roscoe was downfield on a little curl-out pattern. He was there. He was open. The ball just thrown a little bit too high. Third down at 11 from midfield, Roscoe to the left. Larry Conn Smith, number 86, to the right. Now Roscoe goes out, and in to replace him is Leonard Lau, number 85. Triple wide receiver lines up to the right. Looking left is Jones. He wants to run on the quarterback draw, and he only gets to the 47-yard line. Haight was there. Also Jim Johnson, number 71. And Melvin Foster, number 66, it will be fourth down for the Rainbows. And Kyle Alou in to punt it away. Peter Marciano deep, standing at the 10-yard line. There's the punt by Alou. Oh, great punt. And this will go all the way into the end zone. And Iowa will put the ball in play at the 20. I go back to that call on third and 12 of the quarterback draw with Jones. And obviously, they're looking at that penetrating Hawaii uh, Hawkeye defense looking to hopefully you know make a fine a seam run right by those guys as they converge in the quarterback in a definite passing situation at that time Haight showed his great athletic ability as he'd have none of it and was able to close it down real quick so Iowa will begin play at their own 20 yard line Hartley the quarterback eight out of nine and Iowa ready to put the ball in play offensively double wide receiver sets up to the right side. Hartley gives it to Hudson. He gets away from Sangapolu. Hudson trying to go to the near sideline, turns a corner at the 30-yard line, and Kim McLeod finally rides him out of bounds. Oh, excellent run by David Hudson of Iowa. I want to welcome everybody from the Hawkeye Television Network. Jim Leahy along with Rick Langiardi from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. 14-14 with three minutes and 37 seconds remaining to be played here in the first half. Well, it's been a night for fullbacks, and Hudson that time showing his great determination as he broke a number of tackles in trying to get upfield and just showing real determination. 22-yard run that time by Hudson. First down for Iowa on their own 42-yard line. Hartley with splitbacks now. Hartley back to throw for the 18th time. Throws it. It is tipped away by Briggs at the 30. And it's incomplete. I said 18 times. I misspoke. That is his 10th pass. Well, attempt here. He's now 8 for 10. First time we've seen Hotley go deep to Bob Cook. That time on a deep out pad. And Briggs keeping nicely step to step with him. Timed the ball beautifully. Got up there and just able to knock it away. But if it wasn't for Briggs, we saw the accuracy of Hotley because he was about to deliver the ball right into the hands of Marv Cook in that deep out pattern. Tony Stewart has scored two touchdowns for Iowa. 64-yard run, six-yard run. A Cody Fakava has scored two touchdowns for the Rainbows. 28-yard run, one-yard plunge. Second down, back to pass Hartley. Looks to the sideline, throws. It is complete to Stewart. Look out, he's at the 36-yard line and finally wrestled down by Walter Briggs. That is enough for a first down. Stewart is dangerous. Stewart's dangerous. The offensive line for Iowa that time, excellent protection. Hartley was able to get back. Stewart released out of the backfield, up the sideline, had all kinds of time. As you can see, no pass rush on Hotley. He just waits for his tailback to get open up the far side, hits him beautifully, and then Stewart is, is tackled by Briggs, but not before they pick up a big first down on the 35-yard line. Three minutes, 21 seconds left in the first half. 14-14 time. Iowa now moving. 
John Falloon, number 82, is wide to the right. Tony Stewart in a tailback behind Hudson. Stewart steps over a man at the line of scrimmage to the 35, to the 30. Still on his feet. Finally, four Rainbows have to wrestle him to the turf down at the 26-yard line, led by Tavita Sangapolu. Well, we've got a late flag here. We'll have to see what it is. But Stewart showing the same kind of determination and strength that Hudson at fullback. Both backs just very tough to bring down. Personal foul against the Rainbows. Well, that should set Iowa up in outstanding position as you take a look at Hayden Fry and his 10th year with the Hawkeyes. Fry has been saying if the Big Ten has been controlled by the Big Two, that Iowa must be considered one of the Big Two. And he may be right. I think the majority of the people think he is. Well, so inside the 20 at the 18, and it's first down for Iowa. And certainly most of the people whom we're talking to tonight think that way, and they should. Their, their team is showing a lot of potential here, despite the score being tied 14 to 14. Iowa looking awful capable on both offense and defense. Harberts and Falloon are to the far side. To the near side is Missouri. Single setback is Hudson. Hudson with a hit at the line of scrimmage, hit immediately. Number 96 that time for the Rainbows, David Stamps out of Laia on the North Shore. What Hawaii's been able to do against Iowa is on short yardage plays, and that time we see Stanton coming through, is get good penetration. Where Hawaii's defense has been most successful tonight, as we see Gavin Robinson, the outside linebacker, closing down, has been its ability to penetrate under those big offensive linemen. Marv Cook, standing tight end, also into the game, number 85, John Palmer, double tight end now for Iowa, on second down and 11. Back to pass, Hartley, four-man pattern. Hartley, now will run. Throws. It is tipped away by number three, Colson. Michael Colson. Good coverage by the Rainbows that time. Marv Cook was in the area along with Palmer, the two tight ends. It was intended for Cook. Excellent coverage and excellent reaction by Colson as the last second. As Hartley had the time, he scrambled, he got away. He was looking. All of his receivers stayed in the pattern. Everybody was moving. He finally put the ball up, and Colson reacted beautifully. Eight for 11. Out of the huddle comes Iowa. 2.19 left to play. The ball is on the 15-yard line of the Rainbows. Again, Hartley, three-man pattern. Now four-man pattern. Hartley throws. It's complete to Hudson. He's wide open. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. What a block by Cook. Touchdown, Iowa. Real good execution by Hartley. Finding his fullback in the flat. You know, too much time is all you can say on that play there. Hawaii, the offensive line for Iowa doing just a great job. The secondary obviously had everybody covered. The fullback Hudson gets out there in the flat. He's the last guy. Hotley knew where he was. Hits him. Everybody else blocks him in the end zone. 14-yard touchdown reception. Nice run. Nice pass by Hotley. 20 to 14 now in favor of the Hawkeyes. 209. Left the play here in the first half. Jeff Skillet in to try the extra point. Out of the hold of Matt Rogers. Kill it. Drills it through. 209 left in the first half. Iowa falls back in front. They lead Hawaii 21 to 14. Kickoff goes to Larry Con Smith out over the 20-25. Very close to the 30-yard line. First down for the Rainbows there at the 30. 203 left to play in the first half. 21-14 in favor of Iowa. Well, you know, you can say an awful lot about Iowa's offensive line, particularly in the last couple of plays where they've given Hartley tremendous protection. By the same token, you wonder, with the Hawaii defense rushing three people like that, very difficult to make any kind of penetration. They put the ball at the 29-yard line, first down for the Rainbows of Hawaii, come out of the spread formation. Iowa with five defensive backs now. Ball is given to Hikoti Fakaba, struggles to the 33. It's up close to four yards. We'll see where they give him progress. Now, in watching a much improved Hawaii offense tonight, thus far in the first half, how they handle this last two minutes of this first half is, should be interesting to see what kind of hurry-up offense they play. Roscoe sets up as wide receiver to the left. Tom Smith to the right. 
and they are blessed with speed. MacArthur and Mahuke in the slot ball is again given to a Koti Sakawa on the quick handoff, and he is about a yard short of the first down. Third down, and about a yard and a half for the Rainbows for the first down with 112 left. Jones throws, and it is incomplete. It's intended for MacArthur, the ball thrown low, and it will be fourth down now for the Rainbows, and one minute and four seconds left here in the second quarter. So Kyla Lou into punt now for the Rainbows, and deep is Marciano, Peter Marciano, number 26 for Iowa. Good hang time. Marciano will let it fall. Takes an Iowa bounce to the 35-yard line, and it is down there by Theo Adams, number 59. So 56 seconds left to play in the first half. Well, exciting first half. Yeah, I'm going to set the same scenario I just did when Hawaii got the ball with two minutes left down, and Hayden Fry's offense has 56 seconds. I wonder what the strategy will be here with 56 seconds left to go, whether or not Hartley and company will be turned loose to try to get one more score, or whether they'll just be content to run it out and get into the locker room. Rainbow's very conservative, and even away from their game plan on that last series. Very yes. conservative. Here comes Iowa. Rainbow's with a five-man front. Dana Directo, number 97, up over the center. Back to pass, Hartley has all day, throws. It is complete to Marv Cook, but he stumbles at the 40-yard line, gain of five. 48, 47 seconds now, clock ticking away, as you can see it, corner of your screen. Yep, a little hurry-up offense, no huddle, as that time Mark Cook just ran a, a drag pattern in front of my able linebacker, hotly hit him, second and five. Second down and five now for Iowa. Hartley began to throw, and again, coming away from pressure, but Robertson grabs him and sacks him for the first sack of the season for the Rainbow. Back at the 30-yard line, 28 seconds left to play in the first half. Well, nice to see Robinson coming now with the pressures. He comes from the backside of the linebacker. We talked earlier about only rushing three. This time they get the linebacker into the pass rush, and Gavin makes it happen. First sack for Hawaii. Gavin Robinson, a very talented linebacker, sophomore at 6'3", 225 pounds, runs a legitimate 4'6". He is a very talented football player. Five defensive backs now in for the Rainbows. Robert Land joins the crew, number 20. Out of the huddle comes Iowa. Third down and 16 on their own 30-yard line. Hartley on the pitch. This is Stewart. Tripped up and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Mike Tressler, number 37, out of Lihue. So it's going to bring up fourth with 18 seconds to go. Fourth and about 15, so Iowa will have to punt the football. Rainbows with a quick change. Special teams here. Walter Briggs drops back. And Marv Cook, the tight end, in to do the punter. 18 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Cook gets it away. Excellent punt. Great hang time. Driving Briggs back. Back pedals inside the 15-yard line. He's in trouble. Fumbles the ball. No, that's a helmet. Excuse me. <laughs> The second Iowa helmet, though, that's come flying off in, in successive plays. And you can see those people just throwing themselves around down there. Well, Hawaii did a nice job against Iowa that time with a hurry-up offense and shutting it down, forcing them to punt. And so, you know, lo and behold, with only 40 seconds interim there, they were able to stop him and get the ball back. Now, with six seconds left, I don't know what they'll do, but at least the defense that time didn't let them get any cheap scores, if you will, before the half. They got tough when they had to. Rainbows with six seconds left. Billy Stevens alone is set by Con Smith to the near side and Roscoe to the far side. And they'll just run it out. That's the end of the first half. 21-14 in favor of Iowa. Twenty-one fourteen in favor of Iowa over the University of Hawaii. Chuck Hartley in that first half. Ten of fourteen for one hundred thirty-seven yards and one touchdown. And Warren Jones nine for fifteen for sixty-nine yards. Those are the 
two performances by the quarterback. You can see the first downs. Iowa has the advantage in rushing yards, in passing yards. The turnover has hurt them because the Rainbows were able to score on one play following uh, the fumble by Hudson. And the punts, 10 yards uh, difference as uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes have the advantage there and the time of possession. But all things being what they are, I think it was a fairly even first half considering the way the game uh, scenario was set with respect to Iowa having um, so much of a dominant uh, advantage in this game. Good look at Warren Jones on the sideline. And I think that one of the great byproducts, as I said earlier, of this first half has got to be for that young man and what's going on inside of his head and the confidence that he gained in running what looks to be a really revamped offense for Hawaii this year on the Paul Johnson. They really came out, mixed it up well, and Warren has been very decisive and very good in the execution of the offense. Iowa will kick off to uh, the Rainbows. The wind not really a factor here at Aloha Stadium because of the way the stadium is built. The wind just swirls in from many different directions. And if you want to look at what it is more consistent than any other, it's really a crosswind and a light one at that. Skillet kicks off for Iowa. Waiting for it, Larry Conn Smith takes it at the five yard line for the Rainbows to the 15, to the 20, finds a hole, the 30, the 35, the 40. That's an inspiring run back by Conn Smith as we take a look at the first half possessions, this time by Hawaii, Hawaii's offense. You can see, first time they had the ball, they punt. Second time, touchdown. Third one was a short one. Touchdown, punt, punt, and then they then they had that sort of nondescript series there with two minutes left to go, but they got a couple big scores in there, and they were good drives, as you can see by the graphic. So Hawaii very much able to move this ball against this Iowa defense. Now the key to this game is the adjustments. Randall's come out in their spread offense. Warren Jones at quarterback in motion, number 28, MacArthur. Ball is given on an inside handoff. Junior Lopati turns the corner at the 40 and is bumped down. Number 95, Jim Riley made the stop for Iowa. And, and Dave Haight is down. Yes, he is. Haight holding his right knee. You really have to hope that he'll be okay. He's such a tough player. He's such a key to this defense for the Hawkeyes. He's trying to shake it off, but it'll probably have to come off. Dave Haight, the Outland Trophy candidate, somewhat neutralized by Amosa Amosa, Hawaii's great offensive center in this first half as we watch Haight come off the field, but nonetheless, he's such a key component to that Hawkeye defense. So hopefully the injury is not serious. We've seen two Hawkeyes have to leave. Pointing left very early on. Matt Ruland now has come on uh, to play nose guard for Iowa. Haight is out for the moment. First down for the Rainbows, first and five. Ball is given to Fakava, who has come back in. Fakava had to leave, and he's rolled over by Jeff Keppel, and also by number 35, Brad Quast. Linebacker has played very well for Iowa. Short of the first down, it will be third down for the Rainbows. In the game now for the Rainbows, the biggest player on the field, Mark Nua, 6'8", 378 pounder out of Auckland, New Zealand. And he is playing right tackle, number 75. Okay, Cody Fakava again, second down and two, the single setback, gets the call and has the first down as he struggles over midfield into Iowa territory to the 48-yard line. So the reason why I mentioned Nua, big number 75, who will line up all across that front for the Rainbows is that because of his size, he was only expected to play on very short yardage situations. But here he is, one of the adjustments that we talk about here he is at the start of the second half, and he is now lining up at left guard. Big Mark Noor, 378. Jones in trouble. Jones is sacked. Mott, Joe Mott, number 97, the defensive end. Well, another great effort by Joe Mott. We've seen him get in the face of Warren Jones earlier. Joe coming in there at 6'4", 250 pounds from that defensive end position. He just comes in and plays off the blocks, shows a lot of determination just up there in the field in a hurry. And for the fans in Iowa back there, Dave Hate now, they're working on his right knee. They've taken off all the braces, all the taping. And there's a team of people around him, and he's on that bench on, on his back, and he looks to be in quite a bit of pain. 
Second down for the Rainbows now. Second and 22 following that sack by Mott on Warren Jones. Ball is at their own 40. They have to go all the way to the 38 of Iowa for a first down. Jones again in trouble. Now throws off the knee of Omota. Omota. That was intended for Hecote for Cava, and we have a penalty play. Well, Hecote was standing right next to him, and I don't know if the penalty gets thrown because it, it hit Omosa, Omosa not as, as far as an ineligible receiver. I'm not sure how they're going to call this. Eligible receiver. That's, and that's the way the rule book goes. Now well, you see the palms upward by Bob Wagner on the sideline. And he's saying he threw it at your offensive center, coach. That is the flag. Loss of down. Yeah, so a what's... big penalty for the Rainbows. Now they're back to their own 35. Now, something we've not seen in the Rainbow attack of the first half was in a third and long situation, as this one is, third and 27, a big play. Go deep against the Hawkeye defense. We've not seen that kind of a football play thus far in this ballgame. Third and 27 now for the Rainbow. Jones to throw, being chased. Hit as he throws. MacArthur makes the catch at the 40. 35 30. First down, Rainbow. Well, what a clutch play all the way around as Hawaii's offensive line gave Warren Jones the protection that he needed. He dropped back. He sent Dane MacArthur, the young sophomore talented, 1,695 pounds, virtually straight up field into that zone defense. McCarthy gets into the seam, open, Jones delivers it. As you can see, the defense converging on him, but Dane won't even go down after that as he drags up field for another five yards. 35-yard reception. Another Hawkeye is down on the field. MacArthur, 24 catches last year, leading receiver on the team. Has three receptions in this game, and that was a clutch one. Hey, Cody Fakava, chased down by... Big number 71, Jim Johnson, the defensive guard. Second down and nine from the Iowa 29 for the Rainbows. Billy Stevens now in. Jones, sideline pattern wide open is MacArthur inside the 20, and he's really whacked down by Brad Quest. But that is enough for a first down. Excellent pattern by the Rainbow. Well, you know, the Bulls are determined to work against that zone of Iowa. Again, we said they like to play it soft. They, they rely on their ability to come up and converge in the ball. But here you see MacArthur out in the flat, just getting himself open. And before Pippins can come over and make the close, Dane picks up a very important first down inside the 20. So four receptions in this game for Dane MacArthur. First down for the Rainbows at the Iowa 17. Quarterback draw. Jones able to leap inside the 15, and he's bent backward by Jim Riley, big number 95 for the Hawkeyes. Gain on the play of two. Second down and eight. Rainbow threatening here. 11.06 remaining to be played in the third quarter. 21-14 in favor of Iowa. Well, that's the second time that Hawaii's tried that quarterback draw tonight, and to the credit of the Hawkeye defense, They've had nothing to do with it. They've closed it down just as soon as it started. Gaskell to the right, Roscoe to the left as you look at Warren Jones. Second down from the 15. Billy Stevens to the 13. Number 71, Jim Johnson there to make the stop for Iowa. So that will bring up a big third down play now for the Rainbows. Rainbows had third and 27 earlier in this drive and they were able to convert. Good look at Jim Johnson there. Hayden Fry has really collected himself a bunch of good-looking athletes down there right across the board. Chris Gaskell now wide to the right and Roscoe to the left. Mahuka and MacArthur now in motion number 28 are the slot backs. Jones looking right. In trouble. Throws. Incomplete. And boy, what great pressure. Kwast was there. Also Mike Burke number five. And Warren Jones is down for the moment. Well, I think that time the, the Hawkeyes, they got out of that zone, went into a man defense and just came with the pressure. They weren't about to allow a third and long situation, you know, turn out there for the Bulls, and that time it worked. As Jones gets drilled to the canvas. To the now, mat. Brad Quast is helped off the field by Hayden Fry as he comes up a little gimpy. Number 35. In to try a field goal now for the Rainbows is uh, number seven, Jason Elam. They will tee it up at the 20. 30-yard attempt, angle from the left. Elam 
says uh, no. They say no. Ten minutes exactly remaining to be played in the third period. 21-14, Iowa. 21-14 in favor of Iowa. Rainbow's getting close, but coming up empty as that field goal by Elam goes wide. First and ten from the 20-yard line for Iowa. Hart Lieb on a pitch, and with the ball is Stewart, 25, and is able to bump his way all the way up to the 27-yard line. Walter Briggs there to make the stop for the rainbow. Let's take a look at the first half possessions now by way of this bar graph there. You see the first one, they're in the end zone, fumbled, touchdown, touchdown. The blue, I might add there, on both those two punts for Iowa were negative yardage, so the Hawaii defense stiffened that time. So you can see, though, by virtue of all the red and how far it goes upfield, Iowa has had a rather prolific first half. Hardly 10 for 14 in passing, 137 yards. Ball is again pitched to Stewart, trying to get outside. He has the first down at the 30. Still running at the 33, and finally, ninth down by Mike Tressler. We got an injury report just handed to us on Heikoti Fakava, the fullback for Hawaii, has a bruised left hip. They expect that he will return. So first down for Iowa on their own 33-yard line, 9-10 remaining in the third period. And Iowa leads by 7, 21-14. Good look at Chuck Hartley. And we're seeing Hawaii's defense for the first time this half, and we talked earlier about adjustments. Obviously, Hawaii's defense having to come up with some big ones. We'll see what they did in the locker room at the half. Hudson gets the call, and Hudson gets from the 33 to the 35. Mark Odom, inside linebacker. Odom out of Long Beach, California, and Long Beach Poly High School. He was the only true freshman last year that started for the University of Hawaii. Calls the defensive signals, and this is sophomore year. He's a great prospect. Again, we want to say that part of the reason why Iowa has been so successful in this ball game is the strength of their offensive line and how Hawaii can neutralize that remains to be seen. Second down, Hartley play fake. Now throw sideline pattern. It is complete. Excellent catch by Devin Harberts. Harberts making his first catch of this game. Harberts out of Leon, Iowa. Nine catches, 145 yards last year. Well, Harberts runs a deep curl pattern. As you can see, Hartley once again, all kinds of time as he lets his receiver, Harberts, get way downfield, curl out, get open against the zone, and as we've said all along, Hartley with the ability to find that receiver and deliver the ball very accurately. Great execution by the Hawkeyes on offense that time. So now the Hawkeyes are moving. Watkins to the near side. Ball is given to Hudson. Hudson is down inside the 40 to the 39. Oh, Mark Odom was there. Also, Jose Omalo and David Stamp, number 96. Tenth time in this game that Hudson has carried the ball. And it will be second down now for Iowa. Stewart goes in to the backfield along with Bass, number 23. So Iowa taking their time and moving the ball very consistently here in the third period. First drive of the period. Hartley may be audibleizing. He is. They shift out of the eye into split backs. And back to pass. Having all day is Hartley coming to the near side. Now throws. It is incomplete. Intended for Bass on the 36-yard line. Jose Omalo there. Also number 44, David Tanuvasa. Good pressure. Good coverage that time by the Bows. We'll take a look back now here. We've got an isolation on Mark Odom, the linebacker. He drops back from his inside linebacker position. Actually, the defenders are a little bit too close to each other, but Odom reacting to the football. You can see him coming over. Hartley actually had the ball a little bit too high that time in the year. Five defensive backs now in the game for the Rainbows. Robert Land has joined the crew in the defensive backfield. Third down and seven. Hartley back to pass, being chased, hit by Tressler, throws, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted by Mark Odom. Oh, that ball was up for grabs, but what pressure by Tressler. He showed up in a hurry. Well, that's that great safety blitz. I like that. Hawaii's defense traditionally has been a stunting, blitzing kind of all-out attack. Tonight, I think they played rather conservatively at times. This time, the pressure pays off as they gamble. They come after Hartley. You see him being driven into the ground by Tressler, and the ball, as you said, nearly intercepted by Odom, the linebacker. Fourth down. And Marv cooked the tight end in the punt, and he no doubt is thinking very close to the goal line as Iowa right here going for field position. And he punts it up. Good punt. Coming down. Coming down. It'll be long. And the Rainbows will put the ball in play at the 20-yard line. 
Hartley now 11 for 17 in passing, 158 yards and one touchdown. As you look at Marv Cook and Marvelous Marv, one of those All-America candidates for Iowa. 7:01 left to play in the third period, 21-14 Hawker. And he is a outstanding tight end, as everybody knows. But the other thing about him, too, is when was the last time you've seen a tight end be the punter and be so good at punting? I think Pat Richter, back in the old days, the guy who played at Wisconsin, went on to play all those years with the Redskins, was the last one that I can remember. You remember him? I do. You do? I do. I think he's the last one I can remember. Ball is pitched to McCarthy. 25, 30, first down, 13-yard gain. I just remembered another one. Nice game by the poser first play. The guy McNally from Harvard. Yes. Played for a long time. But other, I mean, he's in that same mold. Great receiver, comes back and punts. I just like to see that. You don't see a lot of guys doing that. There you go. Nice pitch out right here to MacArthur to get the ball, a little option. He gets upfield and he just turns it on. Dave MacArthur, a real versatile athlete. Many people consider to be the best all-around athlete on Hawaii's offense. Leon Lau wide to the near side. Ball is kept by Jones. Jones trying to go back the other way. Ad lips his way back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Ringo's never really got anything going. Credit Jeff Keppel that time. Out of Urbandale, Iowa. 6'2", 260-pound junior. Number 51 for the Hawkeyes. Gain on the play of two. Second down and eight for the Rainbows. And the ball short of the Rainbow 35 with 6'18 left to play in the third period. 21-14, Iowa. Jones out of the spread formation. Pitch again to MacArthur. He has the first down out over the 43-yard line. That time, an excellent call by the Rainbow. Nice mixing it up. Absolutely right, Jim. Paul Johnson doing a good job there with the play selection. They mix it up. They run the option, and nobody really there to take the pitch man. As we watch it come down, he rides his fullback. Stevens up inside. He gets it out there, and there you see MacArthur with the defensive pursuit, but nobody out there covering the pitch. Good play selection is obviously Hawaii able to diagnose the inability of the Iowa defense to play that option. So the Rainbow's moving the ball again. They have it at their own 44. Back to pass Jones. Has the time. Quick pattern to Junior Lopati. They say yes. He caught the ball in Iowa territory at the 48-yard line. Short of the first down. But the Rainbow's continue to march. You have to be impressed with the way Hawaii's passing attack has gone to work on that zone. Jones has just zipped the ball in there. He's got his receivers into the open areas, and they've made no bones about it. They've just gone and attacked that zone with this passing attack. Mike Burke comes back into the game, replacing Torque Hook on that uh, defensive line now for Iowa. Second down and two for the Rainbows. The ball is given up the middle of fumble by Billy Stevens, and the Iowa Hawkeyes have it. So Iowa... Able to turn it around, and Dave Haight may have made the recovery. And yeah. he made two recoveries. One to get back on the field, and we'll see if he comes up with the ball here. Yeah, that's a good point. You see his quickness coming down the line there. He may be in position as Stevens coughs up the ball. Haight sort of rolls over a little tumble drill and comes up with the football. That'll make you forget about your sore knee. Nice job, Dave Haight. Right place at the right time. Tough break for Hawaii as they had something going on that drive. So Haight comes back into the game. What a recovery because we saw him stretched out on the bench. I really didn't think he'd be back in the game. Not only is he back in the game, he saved the moment. Hartley gives the ball up the middle to Stewart. Stewart is surrounded by the green shirt. Get on the play of two, perhaps three. Joe Sayo Malu out of Bradford High School, number 55. That time making the stop. Good job of penetration by Hawaii's defense that time. You go back to Dave Hayes just for a second. You've got to believe he's playing with a lot of pain. And, uh, and just giving it his best out there. Chuck Hartley leads his team to uh, the line. John Falloon is to the far side and to the near side is Travis Watkins. Standing tight end is Marv Cook. Five defensive backs in the game now for the Rainbows. Ball is thrown to Falloon, cannot hold on. Had position on Kim McLeod, number 19. That'll bring up third down for Iowa. Falloon had the pattern against McLeod. Hawaii in a zone that time, it looked as if that time for one of the few times we've seen Hartley threw the ball behind his receiver. And as Falloon tried to turn into his pattern, he just couldn't come back on the ball. Too much going towards the sideline. Five minutes, 12 seconds left. Third period. Iowa third down and seven on their own 48-yard line. Mark Mazzari wide to the far side, backpedaling Hartley. Looking, looking, throws, 
It is complete to Marv Cook. Cannot stay in bounds, but that's enough for a first down. And Cook down the inside the Rainbow 40. Marv Cook does it again. We'll take a nice look at Cook on the isolation now. He's that stand-up tight end for Iowa. It becomes a traditional thing. He comes downfield. Now, nothing real fancy. You can see the Bozer and Man defense. Robert Land trying to cover him, but Marv Cook just too much. And Hotley credited him after coming back from the pass behind the receiver, delivered it right on the money. Marv Cook last year caught 49 passes. 33 went for first down. First down, Iowa. That was given on a reverse. Watkins, he's in trouble. He's locked down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Gavin Roberts made that play go. Great penetration from the backside. Reverse came into it. They tried to force it up inside. Jose Umalo was right there. Nice defensive play by Hawaii. Big loss on that play. As you can see, they go to a little razzle and a little dazzle. But turning the play back inside for uh, the Rainbows was number five, Gavin Robertson. And that steered him into the pursuit. Five defensive backs. Robert Land now in the defensive backfield for the Rainbows. Second down and 15 from the 42. Hartley throws. It is complete to Watkins. Watkins double team. Maeva there. And that will bring up third down and about 10 for Iowa. It's a pretty good pretty good thing going on down there right now. Bowes went out with the nickel defense. That time we saw Iowa shift into a no-back set. They had five receivers out there. Both teams going at each other. Pretty good defense by Hawaii as they bring up a third and 11 situation. Both teams getting into the deep pages of the playbook. Four minutes left, third period. 21-14 Iowa. Big third down play. Third and 11 from the Rainbow 39. Hartley. Back to pass. Pressure. Throws. Complete to Hudson. Can the Rainbows get him? And they do. Maeva short of a first down. Nice series by both teams really going at each other. Real solid series by Hawaii to bring up a fourth and long. And I believe another punting situation. Now, will Iowa go for the field position here? The field goal? Or will they go for the first down? And we're looking for Marv Cook. Well, he should be out there because of his, you know, receiving ability. I think they're going to punt the ball, Jim. And Cook will back up. Again, he will go either for the corner or try to get it as close to the goal line as he can. Walter Briggs back deep. There's Cook. That ball sailing toward the sidelines and goes out of bounds. They'll line it up. 3.04 left. 21-14. When we come back, the Rainbows will put the ball in play. First down for the Rainbows on their own 15-yard line. Jones, 11 for 15, 134 yards in passing. More on his play, perhaps his best game as a Rainbow in the opener of 1988. 3.04 left to play. Third quarter, Rainbows trail by 7, 21 to 14. Jones looking. Throws over the middle, crossing pattern. Unable to hold on, Larry Con smith He really took a rip from Fort Hook out of Corriton. Iowa, Corydon, Iowa, I should say. Started in the Holiday Bowl. He was a class valedictorian in high school. But he was hardly valedictory about that hit that time. <laughs> Got the great name, though, Tork Hook. 2.57 left, third quarter. Second down and 10 for the Rainbows on their own 15-yard line. Jones waiting, and Jones is sacked again by number 97. Joe Mark. And that's Joe Mott. He's had of, the big night. He's out of Endicott, New York. Honorable mention, all Big Ten. At 52 tackles, two sacks, one interception, and one fumble recovery in all of 1987. He has two sacks tonight. Well, he plays off the block real well as you see him fight and get in there. He was going against Stevens, the fullback, and that's a mismatch from the word go as he was able to quickly penetrate the, the line of scrimmage. Joe Mott showing a lot of quickness, strength, and determination. Last time Iowa was here, they were able uh, to win it in the fourth quarter, 17 to 6. Ball is given up the middle, carrying the ball, Billy Stevens, to the 10-yard line. And that'll bring on the punting team for the Rainbows with 2.05 left. This is the third meeting between these two teams back in 1956. Iowa able to defeat Hawaii 34 to nothing. And here it is, 21-14 in the opener of 1988. Kyle Alou will punt out of his own end zone to that young man, Peter Marciano, out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Marciano should come up with excellent field position. There's the punt. Marciano drifts back into his own territory, takes it at the 41. Trying for the sideline. Rainbows wait for him. 
and hit him down at midfield. Mark Odom. And that was a 50-yard punt Kyle Alou just ripped off. So it was kind of a clutch punt deep in his own end zone. Well, Alou able to get the Rainbows out of the shadows. And Iowa will take over on the Rainbow 49. So Hartley will go to work. He has a repertoire of weapons. He has excellent players to go to. Devin Harberts is to the near side. Throws complete to Marv Cook. Triple teamed inside the 35 to the 33. 126 left to play in the third period. Cook comes up with another reception and a key one and another first down. Well, hotly rolling to his right that time was just, just perfect in his execution. As you said, there was all kinds of defensive players. Triple T, Mark Cook just got in the scene and hotly found a way to get the football into him. John Falloon to the far side. Travis Watkins to the near side. And the standing tight end is Cook. Pitch to Stewart, number 21. Stewart stumbles to the 30-yard line. Gain of three, second and seven. David Maeva there to make the stop for the Rainbows. And less than a minute to play now in the third period. 21-14 in favor of Iowa. Stewart with two touchdown runs. One, an electrifying 64-yard jaunt through the Rainbow defense. That was the first Iowa touchdown of the season. So Harberts is again to the far side, and to the near side is Falloon. Again, it is Stewart trying to stretch the defense. Comes back over the middle, and they throw him for a loss. That's excellent. As we said earlier in the broadcast, that's what they want to do is try to get Stewart to go outside. Hawaii, confident of their team's speed, feels that they could shut him down. That time you could see it. Good pursuit by the defense as they give the toss sweep now to Stewart. He's going to take the ball before he could turn up field. Gavin Roberts, very quick to get up there, and then come the rest of his people, David Maier, Maeva and Jose Omalu. Good team defense that time by Hawaii. Big third down play now for Iowa. They have the ball at the Rainbow 33-yard line. Five defensive backs in the game. And Marv Cook poised at his tight end position, but they'll have to wait until the fourth quarter. That is the end of the third quarter. Iowa 21 and the Rainbows 14. The Rainbow Warriors are looking for another big win this week when they take on the Rams of Colorado State live via satellite. Saturday morning at 9 on KHNL Channel 13. Remember that at the conclusion of tonight. Remember that at the conclusion of tonight's game, Rick and I will be selecting the Hawaiian Tell Most Valuable Rainbow. Hawaiian Tell will present $100 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Hawaii and the name of the player who went beyond the call. 21-14 Iowa. We begin the important fourth quarter. Third down and 10 for Iowa on the 30, well, well just outside the 32-yard line of the Rainbows. Chuck Hartley looks at the fourth quarter with great anticipation because he's the type of quarterback that really relishes the pressure. And he has done so very, very well. He is not the kind of quarterback that has just appeared on the scene and has received all kinds of accolades from the beginning. He was uh, third string behind uh, Chuck Long. He battled his way. His first play really got him into trouble against Tennessee. And the kickoff classic, when a pitch went awry, was intercepted and returned for a touchdown. But all of a sudden, he put it together, came around, and he, he now is the leader of this team. Well, you know, he paid some dues, and that's so often... Uh comes back to really benefit a guy like Chuck Hartley, and I don't know if you can even say a guy like him. Everybody back in Iowa real high on him, and he certainly is, is poised to have a great year this year. Third down and 10. Hartley to throw. Looking. Throws. Nope. He is sacked down. No, they say his now. They say his knee touched on the 38-yard line. He was looking first for Travis Watkins and then John Falloon. Well, credit the secondary because they locked into the receivers and then the pressure came. But the secondary first gave him nowhere to go as he started to roll to his right. And then the people came and somebody knocked him down to his knee. So it was a real good defensive effort by Hawaii bringing up a fourth and long and Cook will be in the punt. So credit the rainbow defense in the opening minute of the fourth quarter, 21 to 14. And they have held off Iowa three times. This is the third time that Marv Cook has had to punt in rainbow territory. Low snap from center. Cook gets it away. That ball bounces on the five and is 
into the end zone for a touchback. Rainbows will put the ball in play at the 20-yard line. Excellent effort by Hudson. And that almost I, got to it. And I think that was a real crucial series for Hawaii to hold in that situation. Good defense by Hawaii. It's the fourth quarter. Iowa leads 21-14. Rainbow's first and 10 from uh, the 20, 14, 10 left to play in the game. Rainbow's trail 21 to 14. Running back is Billy Stevens. Warren Jones, the quarterback, keeps it. And he has room. 30, 40, midfield, ridden down from behind by Herman Hanks. What a great decision by Jones as he runs the option to the right. Into the sideline where Iowa was, he played off, kept the ball, and then you could see the speed that Warren Jones is his quarterback. He fakes, he breaks the seam, he sees it, makes no hesitation whatsoever, and gets up field. And as Warren Jones was sprinting up field on that 33-yard run, and Cody Fakava was sprinting out of the tunnel from the Hawaii locker room and obviously on the sideline, ready to come back into this ball game. Merton Hanks finally rode him down. The ball at the 47 of Iowa. Again, Jones, this time he is whacked at the line of scrimmage. Running the ball into the short side of the field, and the Rainbows are called for an illegal chip. Second time tonight now that call has, has been made against them. Mark Stoops there to make the stop uh, for the Hawkeyes. Dave Haight back in at nose guard as we mentioned the resiliency of that young man. On the offense, penalty is declined. Penalty second is down. declined, and the Rainbows. We'll have second down and nine from the Iowa 45-yard line. Bob Wagner pacing the sidelines. His team has played very well against Iowa, nationally ranked. Jones now 11 for 16 in the game, 134 yards. 15 carries, 58 yards as well. Jones spins again, running to the near side. And down he goes. Dave Haight chased him down. Hawaii determined to run that option to the short side of the field. They have had some success with it tonight. That time, though, Iowa coming down very quickly and closing down the option, bringing up a third and eight, maybe a third and long seven. 13 minutes, 22 seconds left. 21 for Iowa, 14 for the Rainbow. Clayton Mahuka, Chris Roscoe are wide to the far side. Chris Gaskell to the near side. Billy Stevens, the running back. Third down. Jones rolling to the wide side of the field. Looks, throws long. Has Roscoe. He has it at the five-yard line. What a pretty play all the way around. Warren Jones, credit the offensive line. They gave him the protection. You watch him here. Rolling out to his left. Waiting for Roscoe to get open downfield. He then sets up on it as he's running. Gets the ball off and drops it in right over the defensive back. Chris Roscoe very alert and keeps his feet in bounds as he beats Keaton Smiley. Good execution all the way around. What a big play for Hawaii. And two things immediately come to mind. One, the ability of Jones to throw that far, that accurate on the run. And two, they run to the short side of the field perhaps to set that up. They come out on the power line. Hey, Kofi Bakaba, touchdown! on the field with two big plays as Fakaba runs it in for the touchdown and now the point after to tie it up Elam out of the hold of Alou this game is tied at 21 Rainbows trailing at this point, 21 to 14. They go to Heikoki Fakaba, who has left the game twice because of a bruised hip. He scores his third touchdown. And that's just power football off that power right. And Fakaba getting the great blocking, because as you saw, he went into the end zone standing up. Great execution up front by Hawaii's offensive line. Elam will kick off. Mike Saunders deep, along with Tony Stewart. 
and it will go to Stewart at the 7, the 20. Stewart to the 30. Stewart still running. Still running all the way to the 36-yard line. He's amazing. Now, one thing that Iowa has been able to do with the pride that this Big Ten power has, they have been able to come back. Hawaii, you remember, scored first. Iowa came back two plays later, 64-yard touchdown run by Stewart. In the first half, that was true. Here in the second half, as you just said in the last punt by Cook, Hawaii was able to hold them for three times in their own territory. Hawaii has made some good adjustments in the second half. What they cannot afford to do right now is to give up the big play. Hard laid back pedaling. Three-man pattern. Now four-man pattern. Lays it off. Nobody there. And you may have holding on this, Jim, as they try to set up the screen to the right side. Hawaii trying to press. Flag thrown late, right where they call for holding. We'll take a look at it. Holding against Iowa. And this team is inspired. This crowd is inspired. It's fourth quarter, first game of the season against the nationally ranked Hawkeyes. And Hawaii now beginning to think all kinds of things. They are going to be tough to play against. Hayden Fry, no doubt, concerned with the turn of events. He is definitely not pleased. Travis Watkins goes in as wide receivers now for the Hawkeyes for Devin Hubbard. And uh, the penalty moves the ball back inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Robert Land, number 20, goes into the defensive backfield of the Rainbows. They now have five defensive backs. Travis Watkins shows up as the setback. Now he goes out at wide receiver. And Hudson remains the single setback. Hartley back to pass. Four-man pattern. Hartley chased by Sayomalo. Throws on the run. It is incomplete. Robert Land covering on the play. It was intended for Travis Watkins at Good. the 41. Good coverage, good coverage by Lynn, but the real key now is that Hawaii's defense is beginning to pressure hotly. As we take a look at it, they're going to force him to try to run. You see him getting away from Sayomalu. He's got some pressure. Although Joe's coming from behind, he's got to throw the ball and run. Here the ball is a little bit higher to the outside, and Robert Lynn gets over there. They're starting to pressure Chuck Hartley. Second down and 20 from their own 27. 12.35 left to play in the game, and we are tied at 21. Hartley lays it off for Cook. Can't get it to him. Well, you had David Maeva and Gavin Robinson, two linebackers, putting the pressure on that time with the blitz. Hawaii gambling on a second and long passing situation. Came with the backers. They were able to penetrate, and Hartley had to throw the ball away. Third down and 20 now for Iowa. Watkins comes back in, and he replaces Harvard comes in with the play for Hartley. And this is the kind of play, time and again, as a coach, when you draw it up, you just don't want to give it up. This is where Hawaii wants to come through and force the punt. 12-31, left the play. Tied at 21, big play here on third down and 20. Hartley has the time, throws over the middle. It is incomplete, fourth down. Maeva was there, number 31. Odom was there, number 56. And the pass was intended for John Falloon, number 82. And Hawaii Campbell, they rushed four guys, covered with seven. Four guys rushing, didn't quite get the pressure on, but the seven who covered did a great job. And they're going to force the punt, and the good news is they forced the punt if you're a Hawaii fan deep in Iowa territory. 12-25, remaining to be played in the game. And a new punter comes in, and that is Mark Adams. Adams, good hang time, calling for the fair catch. Is number four, Walter Briggs. First down, Rainbows at their own 48. Excellent field position. 12-18 left to play in the game. And we are tied at 21. And again, we will say that over the years, when the Rainbows play a nationally ranked team, the Rainbows seem to wilt in the fourth quarter. They have not wilted yet. Well, that was a very line. critical series. And the Bulls were able to regain and, and just keep their composure and hold, hold Iowa. First down for the Rainbows. They have the ball at their own, just short of the 48-yard line. Audibleizing at the line is Jones. He has played a magnificent game. Jones keeps it. Pitches back. Complete to MacArthur. The 40. The 37-yard line. First down. Good-looking option. Good decision by Warren Jones as they came across. Excellent blocking up front as they seal the Hawkeye defense in pursuit. It allowed Jones and MacArthur to get out into the perimeter. Unscared, they run the option. Jones times the pitch nicely to MacArthur, and he gets upfield. 
Nice execution, 11 yard run. Big Mark Noah, 6'8, 378 in the game for Doug Powell. And that offensive line for the Rainbow. First and 10 from the 38 yard line of Iowa. Again, Jones shouting instructions. Jones gives it to Fikava, and immediately he runs in to the middle of that line for Iowa. Joe Mott there, Jeff Keppel, number 51. Mott has played an outstanding game. I mean, you say outstanding a lot, but truly outstanding for Iowa. Well, let's see what they do here. They just seal down right now. Nobody blocks. Boy, it's just a collision right there as we see 51 come across Joe Keppel and then the rest of the Iowa defense. Jim Johnson also there, number 71. Second down and 12 from the 40. Ball is given to Fakaba, 35. Fakaba tumbles to the 32. Short of the first down, Mark Stoops Ball on the good, start. Good block up on the right side. I think it was Larry Jones and Mark Newitt throwing those blocks up there. And then, hey, Cody, get up inside real quick as they hit it. Brings up a third and five, but that was a good gain on a second and long situation. Rainbow's now third down. A little less than five. The ball is at the 32-yard line. Tom Smith to the near side. To the far side is Chris Roscoe. Ball is kept by Jones to the near side. Jones in trouble. Down he goes at the 30. And short of the first down. But we may see here Jason Elam. This is well within his range. Or will the Rainbows go? They have a fourth and two. Elam's been called over to the side. He's coming out. Now, keep in mind, he's kicked a 56-yard field goal when he was in high school. He missed in his opening try tonight early on, but we watched him in the pregame. As you said, Jim, we've watched him in practice, and as you just said, this is well within his range. They put it down on the 37, 47-yard attempt. This is an angle from the right. Kyle Aluda hole. It's on its way. It is. with the University of Hawaii from Atlanta, Georgia. Take a look at his reaction. 47-yard field goal. That gives the Rainbow a 24-21 lead over Iowa with nine minutes and 58 seconds remaining to be played in the game. He knew he had it the moment that ball made contact with his foot. He knew he had it. Real clutch by Jason Elam. Elam will kick off. Mike Saunders, number 32, back deep with Tony Stewart. Rainbow's set. We mentioned before that there were a lot of people who said, gee, you know, starting with Iowa, boy, that's, that's something. But I think a lot of fans here at Aloha Stadium tonight, Rainbow fans, open the season against Iowa? Why not? Ball will go to Saunders. At the 20... At the 30, chased down from behind by Terry Whitaker on the special teams. Out of Tacoma, Washington, he is a freshman. And Iowa will start in very good field position out over the 35. And they put the ball down at the 38-yard line. First down for Iowa. Now, the rainbow defense all throughout the third period held Iowa in its own territory. You've got to credit Rich Ellison, the defensive coordinator for Hawaii. Whatever adjustments were made at the half have been real solid. This Hawaii defense has come out and played extremely tough in this second half. Rainbow's trying to get the crowd into the game. First and 10. Ball is pitched. Tony Stewart. Stewart out to the 40 to the 41. Penalty flag has been thrown. We may have. A personal foul against the Rainbows. Mike Tressler credited with the stop. Well, it apparently will be a personal foul on the Rainbow. It might have been on Hartley, who was coming up late. Uh, the the foul late. may have been on Hartley. So Joe Sayomalu leaves. And I just wonder whether he's been ejected. We'll see. Uh, this is where you don't want to self-destruct. This is where composure has got to come into play. Even though they're playing football with reckless abandon on defense, you can't First do that. foul on the defense. Automatic first down. Well, he has not been ejected. 
But a big penalty moves the ball to the Rainbow 44. 9.44 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Team like Iowa, Rainbows have got to have the maximum effort all throughout this fourth period. Iowa playing with great pride over the years. First down from the Rainbow 44, Hartley, quick pattern. It is complete to Travis Watkins, and he is bumped out of bounds by Michael Colson. Very close to the first down. In fact, it will be an 11-yard gain for Iowa. So all of a sudden, the Hawkeyes going to the quick pattern. Well, with 9.30 left to go in this ball game, I think the game plan is pretty much well evidenced by everybody. You can't let Hotley have the time to throw the football. If you do, he's going to complete it. They're going to have to keep the pressure on Chuck Hotley, but at the same time, when they do try to come up on Hudson and Stewart, they've got to be able to tackle them and bring them down. It's that simple. 9.29 left in the game. Hartley's ninth consecutive game of 200 yards in passing. Another amazing performance by this young man. Ball is given on a sweep to Hudson. Hudson trying to turn the corner. Directo knocks him out of bounds. Sayumalo was there. And also excellent pressure by number 94 for the Rainbows, Newton Wano Kaulia. Kaulia with good penetration, and that's what makes a good defensive team. The Bulls came across the line of scrimmage, forced Hudson out to the outside, then the sideline took over. He had nowhere to go. Good looking play. Good look there at Dana Directo, number 97. He is a corrections officer during the offseason. And he says he's only two classes away from graduation. He said, I'd like to have my master's degree by the time I use up my eligibility. He's a junior. Back to pass again, Hartley being chased. Luano Kalia misses him. Hartley is free and running. Maeva finally chases him down. At the 30-yard line, it will be third down for Iowa. Third and a long five, probably third and about six or seven. Actually, when they get done marking this ball, the key to this play as we watch it is the pressure on Hotley. There you see the penetration. They come from the backside now. They're going to run Hotley down. They don't let him set up and find his receivers. Say Milo nearly coming up with the tackle. Hotley ad-libs real well, but David Maeva and Mark Odom over there to pick him up. One thing uh, that the coaches say about Maeva and Odom, they are outstanding athletes at linebacker. Five defensive backs now in the game for the Rainbows. Third down, the ball is given to Hudson. Needs the first down. He's grabbed. He's thrown down. They'll be short. Grabbed by Augie Apelu out of San Jose, California. Big play by Apelu because Hudson's been breaking tackles all night, but he just took him in his grasp and would let him have nothing of it as he drove him into the turf. We'll take a look at it again. They come with the misdirection. Hudson starts up inside one way, breaks across the grain. There, Augie comes off the block and drives him in with Odom and Maeve over in pursuit. Big play by Augie Apelu. One of the rainbows down. And it is now number 96, David Stant, out of Laia. Went to Kahuku High School. Stant being attended to. It will be fourth down for Iowa. And they will try a field goal with Skillet, Jeff Skillet, out of Silvis, Illinois. Red shirt freshman, 6'4", 190. Skillet, have you ever wondered what happened uh, to those national punt, pass, and kick championships? He was the winner in 1979. Remember those contests? Mm -hmm. This is what happens. He's kicking here with 8.05, going for the tie. 24-21 Rainbows. They place it down on the 34, 44-yard attempt. On its way, it is good. And we are tied at 24 with 7.54 left. Credit the freshman. Seven minutes and 54 seconds. Remaining to be played in this game. It has come down to the feet of two freshman kickers, Jeff Spillett of Iowa and Jason Elam of the University of Hawaii. Both have hit long rangers. And we are tied at 24. Spillett will kick off for the Hawkeyes. Larry Kahn Smith standing on the goal line for the Rainbows with 7.54 left to play. Don Smith dances to the six. He's at the 20. And down at the 29. First down for the Rainbows there. 7.48 left. And the clock will become an ever important factor as we move on in this fourth quarter. Well, you have an inspired, confident offense. 
a team that came out here tonight with a lot of people not really knowing quite what to expect. An offensive line that's risen to the occasion and a quarterback that's played superb and a fullback that scored three touchdowns and receivers that have caught the football. Let's see what they do. Warren Jones in the spread formation. He has run this team very well tonight. Jones gives the ball up to the middle, carrying the ball as a Cody Fakava. And Fakava gets what he can from that play. Good look at Warren Jones over there as he meets on the sideline. Again, I say it with all that's happened tonight, Jones in his debut for the 88th season gaining tremendous confidence in his execution. Tremendous confidence. So Warren Jones, who, like Hartley, has had his troubles. He was suspended for disciplinary reasons for an entire season. He then started four games last year for the Rainbows and then was demoted down to the number three quarterback. Started to come back in the spring and won the job just, oh, about a week and a half ago. 7.31 left, second down, and four and a half, the ball at the 35-yard line, just short of the 35. Jones looks to the near sideline, now throws. It is caught. That's a brilliant catch if it's good. They say no. Well, he caught the football, the feet got out of bounds. It was a brilliant effort by Lopati, Junior Lopati, who's returned after six knee operations tonight with a real gutsy effort. Hopefully we'll have another look at it. As Lopati goes up the sideline, the ball is just coming over. He's trying to concentrate on the football. Ah, that may his be. Feet are in bounds. I think yeah, he's that, got a catch. That may be a, a good catch. You need only one foot in the NCAA. I think he has a football. That's an incredible effort by Lopati, but nonetheless, the officials rule Incomplete and brings up third and five. Officials, of course, have to rule without benefit of the replay. Third down, five yards to go for the Rainbows. Ball is kept again to the short side. This is MacArthur, and he is short of the first down, and we have a penalty flag, and Warren Jones is down. Penalty against Iowa. Well, we know that emotions and feelings are running high now, but that's a little bit back there. Jones was hit late, Fisher was right on top of it, good call, and Hawaii will pick up an automatic first down with some good field position. Automatic first down. But the Rainbows have the first down because of the penalty. Jones appears to be all right, but MacArthur limps going off the field. You see Hayden Fry concerned here, 7-12 left to play in the game. And the ball is at the 47-yard line from the Rainbows, Gasco to the left, Con Smith to the right. In the slot, MacArthur, no, not MacArthur. It is Mahuka and Daniel Ahuna. Over the middle, tipped and incomplete. Once that ball is tipped, everybody is free game. One of the Hawkeyes slow in getting up. That's number 45, Merton Hanks. And credit to Warren Jones, who was hit late, limped up into the huddle as he set up to throw that ball, although it was thrown low. It was thrown with great authority. He really had some zip on that football. 6.58 remaining to be played here in this game. 24-24. Rainbow's three touchdown underdogs going in. That played Iowa even. Ahuna and Lopati now in the slot. Ball is kept by Jones. He has some running room. The 40. And he may have the first down. It depends on the forward progress. I think he's going to get it, Jim. I think he just got enough up and over that line. We'll watch where they spot it. He was actually stopped and got away. I thought they had him really corralled, hemmed in, fenced down. Well, we'll take a look at it. As he comes out there, he's going to fake it here, like a little option to one side. Stops, gets away from the tackle of both Jim Johnson, and he gets upfield. And tackled by, I think, 40. I'm not sure who came up there, but Mark Stoops, 41, was the one to come over here. We'll watch the measurement. They're going to measure for the first down. They stretch the chains. Do they have it? just by the nose of the ball. First down, Rainbows, and the clock now, 6.47 left to play in the fourth period. Jones able to escape the pincer move that time of Joe Mott and Jeff Keppel. Actually, Mott and Keppel took themselves out of the play. Yep. They collided. One of those classic plays with two linemen coming down, converging on each other. So the underdog Rainbows now have the ball at the 37-yard line of Iowa. First and 10. Jones to the short side, and he is met by Jim Johnson. Johnson rolls him down, and you wonder, 
Rainbow's trying to set something up, running into the short side again. Well, the last time they did that, they came back with the big pass up the far side of the field. I don't know, Jim. They've always had, a, I think, a tendency to like to run the option into the boundary, into the short side of the field, and they've had some mixed success with it. That time, though, Jim Johnson from Iowa had, had nothing of it as he ran down Jones from behind. Clock running, 5.59 left. We are tied at 24, fourth period. Ahuna and Lopati in the slot. Jones throws, complete to Ahuna. Number 29, Daniel Ahuna, out of Kamehameha, transfer from Linfield College. Just a little curl pattern into that zone. Ahuna gets downfield. Again, good protection for Warren. And on the run, he throws it with a lot of zip. And you see the ball right in front of Stoops is able to beat that zone. Brings up a third and two. Good situation. First catch for Ahuna. Number 29. Third down and two. The clock, five minutes, 16 seconds. They come out of the power eye formation on third down short yardage. They give it to Cody Fakaba, bumping, looking, bouncing to the outside, and he is close to the first down. Uh, he'll have it, Jim. If they put the ball right there with the official standing, he's got a first. And they will measure. No, they're going to give the first down. No measurement. Credit Fakaba. Credit for cover, the offensive line in that power eye formation. All 11 football players on the field for Hawaii determined to pick up that first down. So now Polynesia's team with four minutes and 49 seconds remaining to be played in this game. Starting to knock on the door against nationally ranked Iowa. They have the ball outside the 26-yard line of the Hawkeyes. Ball is given to Billy Stevens. He is able to high step inside the 25. Okay, without jumping the gun, with 4.30 left, you're eating up the clock. It's good ball control, and you are in Jason Elam's territory now. Hawaii, starting to, against all odds, have a potential possibility of taking control and winning this ball game. They are using the clock extremely well. They are perfect in their use of the clock. And just to control it. And just that's to the point. keep possession of the ball. Roscoe to the left and Gaskell to the right, second down and eight from the 24. Jones with Fakava as the running back. Fakava to the 22. Clock, 3.50. Jones used that clock massively as he took the ball with only one second remaining on the 25 second clock. Keep in mind, both teams have all three timeouts remaining for each ball club. Iowa with three and Hawaii with three as we get down to the 330 mark in this ball game. Roscoe to the left, Gaskell to the right, third down, long yardage. Third and six from the 22 of Iowa. Jones, quarterback, has the first down at the 15 to the 12, fumbles the ball, but it may have hit the turf first. It may have hit the turf first. First down, Hawaii. He was down. Good call by the officials. I don't think you'll see too much dispute from the Iowa players. He was down. Good ad living. That time, the draw worked for Hawaii. Jones does a nice job of getting up field. Big first down. They may, the heck was kicking a field goal. They may even get in for seven. Rainbow score here. Score the touchdown. That really puts the pressure on Iowa. Let's take a look. Is this a fumble? Or what, did he have it when he went down? Hard to tell there. I, to I thought I saw the ball starting to come out there. I agree. On the way down. I agree. It looked like it popped out while he was still up. Power eye formation. Ball is on the 13. Hey, Cody Fakaba. Spins to the nine. 241. 240. The crowd begins to sense it. This is an excellent way to play football against any team. Rainbows are just using the clock extremely well. And that may be an understatement. Well, and now, got, the clock is stopped. You've got two Iowa players, one of whom is still on his knees. They've come out to give him some attendance there. The 232 left. Could be Brad Quass, the, the linebacker. And it is. Foster will come into the game now for Iowa. No matter what happens, this has been something else. This has been. And this last drive right now by the Bows being executed brilliantly all the way around by players and coaches. The play selection, the physical execution by the players, 
everything working perfectly for Hawaii. And the crowd here getting into it. 43,000 in the park tonight. 46,000 tickets were sold. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining to be played. 220. Rainbows have the ball at the Iowa 9. We are tied at 24. Second down. Rainbows can get a first down just outside the two. Again, the power eye formation kept by Jones. Jones is able to get it to the seven. The clock, one minute, 59 seconds. Timeout has been called by Iowa. So the Hawkeyes stop the clock, 156 left. The score tied at 24. And when we come back, the Rainbows will have the ball at the Iowa seven. Third and five from the Iowa seven. 156 remaining to be played in this game, and we are tied at 24. Our I formation, Jones to Fakava. Leaps, he is short of the first down. We will see Jason Elam. Jason Elam will come on to try to give the Rainbows the lead with one minute and 45 seconds left. Well, the great thing about this situation for Elam is he's had the benefit of kicking a beautiful 47-yard field goal on his last attempt. And another timeout by Iowa has been taken. That's the second timeout by Iowa. Credit the Rainbows here in the fourth quarter. We said that the scenario that has been played over and over again, year after year, is that the Rainbows just don't have enough manpower. They just don't have enough left in the fourth quarter to really challenge the brand name teams. The Oklahomas, uh, the Nebraskas, the Iowas. Tonight, that scenario never came about. No, it never came about, Jim. It just causes me to reflect on what the coaches themselves were telling us earlier in the week. A couple of things that they liked about their chances tonight was the fact that they felt these fo this football team was generally tougher in all aspects than they were a year ago. In fact, in some cases, considerably physically tougher and that they were in good condition. Physically, they had a great preseason and they were ready to play. Whether or not it was going to be a factor at that point was hard to tell. Now it has really shown as they come on in the fourth quarter, the really second half of that matter, and have held their own. And let's see what happens here with the ensuing field goal attempt. The tee has been placed on the 13-yard line, 23-yard field goal to give the Rainbows the lead with one minute and 40 seconds left. Le Moitour, the long snapper. Alou, the hold. The kick by Elam. It is. Good. 136 left. A minute 36 away from the first stunning upset of the 1988 season. And a minute 36 seconds away from perhaps the biggest victory in the history of University of Hawaii football. We could have mayhem here if that were to occur. I guess the question boils down to this. Will they allow Iowa to come back as we saw in the first half with Stewart with the 64-yard run up and make it look easy? Or will we see the second half defense that we've seen tonight hold tough, shut down hot leaving company? That's what remains in the next minute and 36 seconds. Remember, Iowa has been ranked as high as first by Sport Magazine, ninth by Sports Illustrated. The wire services have them in the top ten. We got there you see the reaction of Bob Wagner on that field goal. Wagner trying to maintain his cool. Coaches take lessons in that. And Hayden Fry taking a look at Elam's efforts. One minute, 36 seconds left. Deep for Iowa, and it is very important field position here. Elam kicks off, and it is taken and dropped. Touchback, they'll have it at the 20. Well, that's a break. That's a break to start the situation off. In fact, he's lucky the ball went into the end zone. Richard Bass could not hold on to that ball, and it will be first down for Iowa at the 20. One minute, 35 seconds left to play in the game. And Chuck Hartley, who can do it? He's been under pressure before. Now must lead Iowa back for either the tie or the win. Rainbows have five defensive backs. Iowa has one timeout remaining. First and 10 from the 20. Complete. A knockdown at the 25-yard line. Spun out of bounds. Michael Colson making the stop on Devin Harbert. Oh. 
stops the clock. And I guess the key question, and only Rich Allison knows what he's about to call with his defense, is whether or not you go all out and pressure and pressure hotly to take the chance with man, or whether or not you keep the coverage going and hope that three or four guys can get to him. Double slot formation. Hartley again, has all day. Throws, look in pattern. That is complete to Falloon. Has the first down, out over the 35 to the 37 yard line. And they will stop the clock to move the chains. One minute, 22 seconds left to play and the Rainbow's leading 27-24 over the Hawkeyes of Iowa. All the superlatives do not fit. They are not adequate to the task here in the last minute 17. Hartlett looking to the sideline. Throws. It is complete to the big guy, Marv Cook. That's a first down at the 48. 111 left. Again. And they will move the chains again. And now it is Iowa who is using the clock. Iowa using their weapons and moving the ball up to. All it takes is one big play by the defense, but you can see the poise and the maturity, especially of Chuck Hotley in this situation. Hotley again back to pass. The Rainbows rush only four. He throws. It is complete. Down to the 25-yard line to Devin Harbert. And Hartley, can he pull it out? He is doing it. 58 seconds left. Iowa has only one timeout remaining. This is a matter of believing right now. The Hawaii defense has got to adjust. Hot lead that time in the face of a great rush by Gavin Robinson as he was being hit. Threw the ball perfectly. Hard leap again. Sideline pattern. Harvard. He's hit. And they say the stop the clock. He got out of bounds. Inside the 20. Now the field goal is always a possibility with 48 seconds left. But this is a prideful drive by the Iowa Hawkeyes. All of their pride, all of their ratings, all of their reputation on the line here in this drive. 48 seconds left. They are down already at the Rainbow 18-yard line. Second down and three. And Iowa move. Penalty. With the left offensive tackle that time, I think it might have been Bob Cratch. Moved back before the ball was snapped. Number 70. 47 seconds for Iowa. Got to move the ball back to the 23 yard line, Dead ball. which may be, ball start which may be on the offense, still second down. Talk about cross. This is what it's all about right here. Second down, eight, from the 23 yard line. Hartley has time. Throw for the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Iowa! What a comeback! There's a flag on the field. There's a flag up field, Jim. An unbelievable catch in the end zone over one of the bridge heads, but it may be holding. Let's see. Here comes Pat Sweeney holding Iowa. That could be the call of the year right here for Hawaii. A hot breath for Iowa. If they're going to do it, they'll have to do it again. Hayden Fry trying to get his team composed. 40 seconds remaining. Fry wants to talk to Hartley on the sideline. 40 seconds left. On the offense. Still second down. Now that takes away an excellent catch by Travis Watkins. And it gets Walter Briggs to relive it. <laughs> Forget about it. Shake it off and come back again. What execution that time by Hartley, but credit the defense for coming and forcing the holding penalty. Great pressure by Hawaii front. Here comes Iowa again, second down and 18. On the 33. 40 seconds left to play in the game, and the Rainbows lead by three. Hartley looking. Throws. It is. Did he get it? They say no. He was out of bounds. Travis Watkins. We've got a second and 20. This place is going out. Now to be third and 20. Two plays away from a great upset. 32 seconds left to play in this game. 32 seconds away from absolute delirium, from a night perhaps of snake dancing in the parking lot of Aloha Stadium. This is the big play right here. Third down for Iowa. Hartley has been on the money. He's been able to get the ball where he's had to get it. He tries it again. Four-man pattern. Lays it off for Hudson at the 30. Hudson at the 27. Did he get out of bounds? He did not. 
23, 22. Iowa's got to call its last timeout. What a 21. What a great open field tackle by Robert Land, who came up out of the secondary and just nailed Hudson. And there you see the clock stop with 21 seconds left. And now the decision with fourth down. Jeff Skillet has already placed the tee down, and he has placed it at the 34-yard line. The wind is blowing from right to left. He'll be on the right hash mark, which means the ball will trail with the wind. The key is down at the 34. 21 seconds left. Skillet, who has already hit a 42-yard field goal, again it comes down to the freshman. For Hawaii, Jason Elam. And for Iowa, Jeff Skillet. And I would not be surprised to see the Rainbows take some timeouts here, too, because out of the new rule, you can take consecutive timeouts. They want Skillet to think about it, and the crowd wants to get into the game. Excellent point. That is a new rule this year, and it may be in to take on a very bizarre consequence here as it's been put in ordinate pressure on a kicker in a situation like this. I think you're absolutely right, Jim. That's a very astute call. I think the Bulls will take advantage of that rule change. Skillet standing by himself at the 40-yard line. And the stomping starts here at Aloha Stadium. 21 seconds. Rainbows, remember, can call a timeout. Bob Wagner over talking uh, to the officials, I think, just on that point. And who would have ever thought that at the conclusion of this game that Iowa would be trying for a tie with 21 seconds left to go? An incredible effort. And that's why they play the game. He said 42-yard field goal, 44-yard field goal. I stand corrected by Skillet. And timeout now has been called. Timeout has been called by the Rainbow. They want Skillet to think. And Bob Wagner wants to talk to his troops. You gotta believe they're gonna go for field goal block on this too. They wanna keep maximum pressure. With the success of timeouts, aside from putting pressure on Skillet, the other obvious is the defense gets a chance to catch their breath with all their adrenaline going to be totally fresh and to max out on that one effort at the snap of the football. We talked about superlatives before as it comes down to, to these magical moments of college football in which a team that has proven themselves in Iowa starting their 100th year of college football competition. The Rainbow is one of the youngest Division I programs in the country. Boy, only turning into a Division I program in 1973. You know, there you see something that's really absolutely amazing. You talk about the poise. I'll tell you, you talk about the poise of Hayden Fry with his quarterback. Oh, he was talking to Skiller. He was laughing with him on the sideline, trying to relax him. What else can you do in the world of coaching? Out of the hold of Matt Rogers, Angle from the right, timeout again, Hawaii. Remember what we said about consecutive timeouts are allowed. The Rainbows call another one. And Skillet probably will go over with another chance at repartee with his coach, Aiden Farr. 27-24, Rainbow. Well, you called it. You know, you're right up on the rules changes, and that's real good. And I think the fans, if they don't know what's happened, We'll say it again, with the new rule change, you're allowed to do this, and coming into a situation like this, first game of the season, it's amazing to see the potential impact. Only Skillet knows what's going on in his mind right now. Skillet, as we mentioned before, the winner of the punt, pass, and kick competition in 1979, so he no doubt has kicked under pressure before, but it all comes down to this one, well, the snap, the hold, and the kick. He's kicked under pressure. He is a freshman red shirt, okay? But not quite this kind of pressure ever before. Here it is. 34-yard attempt. 27-24 rainbows, 21 seconds left. The kick. It struggles. It struggles. It is no good.
biggest victory in the history of University of Hawaii Athletics. Football, 14 seconds, 13 seconds. The final 10 seconds. We're gonna have to run another play. The University of Hawaii wins this football game. upset of 1988 and I have to say it in thinking back the biggest upset in the history of University of Hawaii football the biggest victory in the history of University of Hawaii football the rainbows never quit oh they bent tonight they bent they had the other team ahead but they came back in the second half that's that old scenario has been beaten into the ground finally finally 27-24, Hawaii upsets nationally ranked Iowa, a team that was picked to challenge for the national championship and still very well made. But the pride that was evident in this Hawaii team tonight, the way they play, their performance will be remembered as long as they are still suiting up players at the University of Hawaii. This is one of those historical, magical moments. And if you want to go a little crazy tonight, go ahead. You deserve it. You've said it all, Jim. We've been watching Hawaii football for many, many years. We've had the privilege to call them. This has been the best. It's a great moment. The Hawaiian Tell most valuable rainbow for tonight's game is Warren Jones. He was magnificent at quarterback. His decision-making was superb. His leadership ability was tantamount to this victory. Many other players were considered for this. But Warren Jones finally establishing himself tonight as a quarterback of note for the University of Hawaii. Hawaiian Tell is pleased to contribute $100 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Hawaii in the name of Warren Jones. Hawaiian Tell going beyond the call. So it is an historic moment. It is an electrical moment. It is one of those moments that everyone will look back on and say, I was there when the Rainbows were able to defeat Iowa. And uh, that happened tonight, 27-24. It came down to the last delicious moments of this game where Iowa had a chance. In fact, when you look at how this game was won, uh, Travis Watkins had what looked like the touchdown uh, pass in the end zone, call back because of a, of a holding penalty. All of those things contributed to the victory. It was one of those things that you had to be there for the whole game, the maximum effort for the Rainbows the whole game. And in the end, they looked up at the scoreboard and they walked off of this field with a new, a new identity, I think. Well, that's exactly right, Jim. We went into this broadcast tonight saying there were two separate problems. One was Iowa and its prowess. The other, the inexperience of Hawaii coming together. Tonight, as Hawaii emerges from this game victorious, so much for inexperience. This team has come of age in one football game, prepared to take on the 88 schedule. And I'd just like to say something that has been the case for too many years, that people think that Hawaii is an anomaly of college football, the elbow of the nation, a team that is almost forgotten. Sports Illustrated treated Hawaii with one sentence. The Rainbows will have trouble scoring, their opponents will not. I wonder what the editors of Sports Illustrated are thinking tonight for all of their for all of their great verbiage about how brand name teams are supposed to win national championships. This school out here in the middle of the Pacific, Polynesia's team, has just upset one of the finest football teams in the country, 27 to 24. And you know what helps out Iowa? It won't appear. If 
Sunday's paper. But if I could just say one last thing, it was not a fluke. It was not. It was a it very, was very good victory by this Hawaii football team. So you see Bob Wagner there, and you see Hayden Fry, and he's congratulating Warren Jones. Hayden Fry really showed me some class tonight, the coach of uh, Iowa. What a tremendous victory for the University of Hawaii. Everybody can celebrate tonight. Go ahead. Celebrate all night long. Oh, the snake dancing that could be going on. 27-24, Hawaii has upset Iowa a great start to 1988.